live from the Kent State Ice Arena, the American Collegiate Hockey Association proudly presents the Kent State Golden Flashes as they play host to the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Danny Callahan. I'm joined alongside my commentator part my commentary partner this evening, uh, Jake Micah. And Jake, I want to start things off with you real quick. The Flashes are on a six-game losing streak. They have not had the best of luck these last few games. What can they do tonight? How can they break that losing streak? Well, Danny, one of the things that they really need to work on is get more consistent scoring from their offense. They're a young team, and finding the back of the net can be difficult for a young team. But they're getting good opportunities. They're getting good chances. And they're not able to put the puck in the back of the net. And it showed last night. It showed the last couple weekends. They really need to be able to get some more firepower going with their offense. Definitely. I was talking to Coach Underwood a little bit before the game. They outshot Eastern Michigan last night. They had 48 shots total. Eastern Michigan only had 17. But Eastern Michigan made smarter shots. Coach Underwood really wants the team to make smarter shots tonight. How important are smart shots in a hockey game? You know, getting the puck to the net and getting a lot of pressure and testing this goalie, uh, is it's a lot of pressure. Um, they, they, need a, they need to get a lot of pressure. They need to get a quick jump out on this team tonight. Last night they went down 4 nothing. They battled back to get it to 5-3, but... When you put yourself in a 4 nothing hole, you're doing a lot to your own self-confidence as a team and just putting yourself behind the eight ball as it begins anyway. So getting a quicker start, getting pucks. Let's, let's hope that Kent you know, gets pucks in that really early on in the night, gets a lot of pressure, and they get to a quick jump, and they might have a better night than last night. Definitely. And right now we're going to go through the starting lineups. Uh, we will start with going through Eastern Michigan's lineups. Eastern Michigan tonight, starting at forward, we have number 95, Austin Turner, number 55, Tim Conlin, and number 12, Spencer Pacenti. On, def on defense, we have number 11, Lucas LaPlante, and number 17, Dylan Namofsky. And in between the pipes, number 34, Daniel Collins will get the start for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Phenomenal. And then for Kent State, starting as the forwards, we got Nate Batowski, followed by Rob Ferrari. And then the last forward starting for Kent is Danny Nugent. Now the two men down on defense are going to be Justin Bioni and then Zachary Barnes. And then the man in the goal tonight for Kent State is going to be Shea Spanier. So phenomenal starters there for Kent and Eastern Michigan. It's going to be a great start up uh, early on in this hockey game. And Spanier on the year, he's played in three games. He has an 0-2-1 record with a 3.14 goals against average and a 9.07 save percentage. And he's playing against Collins in the other net for Eastern Michigan with seven games played, a 1-3-0 record, 4.15 goals against, and a .906 save percentage. So two young goalies looking to have a strong game tonight. Of course, and we will pause now for the national anthem. was just phenomenal the presentation of of course the colors of the US and we are gonna get things going here now one thing Jake I think that Kent State's really gonna want to focus on is tight defense that was another thing coach Underwood was really addressing just be a little bit tighter and more disciplined down in the defensive zone um, especially against this very dangerous Eastern Michigan team and that comes a lot with that's a lot of talk about the youth that the Kent State team has it's defensively that's something that you pick up more and more as you come along getting better discipline um, I think that they know that they know that they have to be strong in their own end they have a young goalie in net who hasn't seen a lot of starts so they want to be strong in front of him tonight we'll see what happens I mean 
it's it's team defense is really what's going to have to be together. All five guys working together to try to you know keep keep everything to the outside and let their goalie see the puck pretty nicely. Definitely. And the other thing I just wanted to add real quick, even though Kent State has gone on a six-game losing streak, all their losses have been close losses. There haven't been too many blowouts this year from Kent State, and they've been going up against some tough teams in Robert Morris and, of course, Syracuse. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do tonight at home against the Eastern Michigan Eagles. And the puck is down. It is on the ice. It looks like Eastern Michigan's going to win this faceoff. And it looks like LaPlanette passes it. And here we go. It's going to be across the ice now. And it looks like they're going to call icing here. Fast and furious to start things off. Nice little chance for an offensive zone faceoff here for Kent early. Let's see if they can, let's see how they look on the forecheck. Let's see how they maintain pressure and see if they're generating offense like Coach Underwood wanted them to. Looks like Ferrari's going to be in there up against Conlon. And there we go. Flash is now missed opportunity. There goes Ferrari there. And here come. Here comes Eastern Michigan, but looks like some checking in there. Mid-ice, puck is in the air, it's out of play. Very fast and furious offense from both sides starting out. Looks like puck control is slowly an issue, but we're still early on, obviously. We're not even 30 seconds into the first period, and it's already a chaotic game. Here comes Conlon against... And there we go with flashes winning that. There, there's Zarecki chasing that one down. Here comes Trevaria with the puck. He shoots and he misses. And it's going to be, it looks like they're going for that puck there. But it looks like everybody's really fighting for it down there. About five or six bodies were on that puck. But you got to definitely hand it to Daniel Collins for getting that save. Yeah, that was, that's the kind of pressure that you want from Kent. I mean, they, they got the puck right to the net, and all three forwards swarmed and were battling around for it. The puck was hanging there for a little bit, but Collins was able to snag that up. But that's what you want to see from the flashes. You want to see them getting pucks to the net and getting pressure right on that goalie to see if he can make any plays. Of course, you got to respect that. And here comes Trevaria. He's going up against Barton Slogger. Barton Slogger against Trevaria, and it looks like Trevaria is going to win that. Zarecki shoots it past. And here comes Dylan Anderson getting the puck there. He's going across ice. Trevaria trying to scoop it up, but he misses. There's Zarecki with the puck. And here comes Smith. He gets it out, but it looks like Eastern Michigan's going to bounce back. Here comes Colton Huff, one of the top guys on the team. He passes there to none the less than Barton Slogger. Slogger shoots it. He misses. Looks like the flashes are going to recover here. And there they come, bringing it up the ice. He gets it out. It's down center ice, but it looks like they're going to get it there. That's Bogart. David Bogart for Eastern Michigan has it there. And there goes, looks like they lose the puck again. Anderson's chasing it down. Anderson gets the puck. He gets it out down to the flash. And there it goes. Looks like they're all fighting for it down there in the corner. And Schwartz is trying to get it out of there. Puck is in the air, almost went out of play, but it looks like it's at center ice again. And here comes Holupnik. Holupnik chasing it down, but it looks like Eastern Michigan's going to bounce back there. And it looks like there will be icing. Both teams are moving the puck pretty well, and they're both getting some good early chances there. Um, the, the thing that we're going to have to watch, especially in this game, and it's been something that's hurt Kent and, it, and Kent's taken advantage of it both, is turnovers in the neutral zone. So we'll see if that keeps me up with the theme. But right now, both teams are throwing the puck away to each other in the neutral Definitely. zone. Definitely. Something that they've been working on all year, Jake, and it looks like the fight for the puck is going on down there. There's Herman, and he gets it out. He loses control a little. Herman's trying to bounce back with it. Looks like Hillebrecht's trying to get it. Everybody's fighting for that puck. Eastern Michigan, now it's in the neutral zone. Here comes the flashes. They got it at their defensive end, kicking it out. There comes Herman. He's lost a little control of the puck there. And there, Cody Greenberg chasing it down, but it's going to get scooped up by Renecki. Renecki passes it out to Barton Slogger. And then it looks like flashes are going to get it there and here it comes at center ice the flash is moving it up they've got the puck they are trying to get it but it looks like the defense is going to be a little bit too much there eastern michigan with the puck there but once again recovered by the flashes and here comes herman with the puck he shoots it but he misses it's off the player's leg and eastern michigan now moving it up conlin he passes it and there's going to be a whistle there And I think that was an offsides they're calling that on. Yeah, those offsides plays are always frustrating. That was a nice chance generated by the flashes. It was a nice stretch pass by Bioni to get it up in the 
into the neutral zone up to Hillebrecht, and they got a nice opportunity out of it. Let's see if they try to take advantage of that and put more pressure on the Eastern Michigan defense group. They really do need to put more pressure there. Kicking it out. Here comes the flashes there. Herberg gets it out, but it's going to be at center ice there. Bogart gets it, and it's going to be out of play. He hits it out of play there. Bogart did. And it looks like right now, neither team's really building control of the game. It seems like it's still anybody's game. Of course, it's early it on. It looks like they're feeling each other out a little bit. They're just they're both they're both trying to settle into this game, and we'll see if anybody gets up. Who, let's see who makes the first mistake and who will be able to take advantage of it. Yes, of course, they're both settling in, and the puck's going to go out of play once again. Herberg, right there for the flashes, get it, got it out of play, and it's going to be another faceoff. Now the flashes tonight only are. It looks like they're only dressing five defensemen. It looks like it's Herberg, Barnes. Bioni, Anderson, and Bubanic, which have been the five most consistent defensemen for Coach Underwood this year. So I'm, I'm assuming that he wants to just see his guys. He's talked about wanting to play better team defense, and he's trusting his five best defensemen out here tonight. Of course, very wise strategy by Underwood having those defensemen out. It looks like it's so far working, but Eastern oh. Michigan, oh, that shot there by Eastern Michigan. And here comes Posenti. He gets it. He loses control. Flash is now fighting for that puck. He shoots it across, and oh. he misses. It's going to be out of play. That was Posenti there, Spencer Posenti, number 12, for Eastern Michigan. Tried to shoot it, but it went out of play. Yep. That was a dangerous play there by Posenti. He, uh, he had a nice opportunity. It was a nice save on the first shot by Spanier, but he had a chance to really put that one home, and he just shot it right over the net. But he had Spanier beat on that chance if he would have hit the net. So the Flashes need to be able to find guys in the defensive zone better and pick them up and try to get stick on stick and tie them up there. Of course they do, and here we go again. The puck is out. Anderson tries to scoop it up. He's unsuccessful. Zarecki getting it out to center ice. Eastern Michigan's going to chase it down now. And now Eastern Michigan back across. And it looks like Spain, you're trying to stop it. Dylan Anderson going after the puck for the flashes. He kicks it up in the air, and the puck is still on the flashes' defensive side. Anderson should be going for that. He's not. Jason Smith tries to go for it, and there's going to be a whistle there. I think they're going to call a penalty on somebody here. Looks like the first penalty of the evening. And it's going to... Nope, no penalty. There. It's going to be a hand pass that's coming out of the zone. All right, that was a close call there. It looked like a pretty aggressive hit. But it looks like the Flash is chasing it down. That's Bioni there. Bioni has the puck behind the goal. He's trying to get it out of there trying to get it on their offensive, and it looks like he's going to be slightly successful, but it looks like they lost control. And here comes Eastern Michigan, and it looks like they're going to get plowed down. Javaria really wants that puck. He is unsuccessful. Bioni chasing it down. Now trying to get it out of the defensive end, trying to get it onto the offensive end here for the flashes. Bioni with the puck. He passes it down. That is Anderson. Anderson kicks it up. And the puck now, once again, Eastern Michigan scooping it up there. Chavaria is after it. Chavaria kicks it to Zarecki. Zarecki trying to get it, but Eastern Michigan recovering there. There's, Sm there's Simf. Simf has it for Eastern Michigan. He's moving it up. He shoots it. He misses. And here comes the flashes. They're trying to get that puck out of there, and it's being controlled by Jason Smith. He moves it up, and it looks like he lost a little bit of control. There is about 15 minutes left in the first period, and here comes Eastern Michigan. That's LaPlunk. LaPlunk has it. He's moving, weaving across that defense there, and he's trying to get the puck. He loses control just a little bit, and it looks like Schwartz is going to try to stop him, but no, Eastern Michigan keeps control, and here comes Jacob Friedman, the impressive freshman. He's moving it up, moving it through the defense. He moves it up now, and he misses on that shot. It looks like Bioni's going to recover. He shoots as well. He misses, and here comes Nathaniel Schwartz. Schwartz gets it. Friedman now has it. Bound to here come Eastern Michigan, and they kick it out, but they really get it to nobody there, and it looks like it's going to be a pickup there by Spanier. Spanier moves it through the ice across, and it looks like we got another icing here. Stoppage in play. About 14-20 left in the first period, and Jake, what are you seeing so far? Um, especially on that opportunity, Kent's got to hit the net with those chances. There are two chances there that they get, they missed the net. And that's what we talked about earlier, getting, you're getting good, they're getting decent pressure. It's been, a, it's been pretty even about offensive zone time for between both teams, but Eastern's getting way more shots towards the net. Kent needs to get some more high level chances um, in front of this goalie. They just need to make smarter shots, I think, and get better looks, but here we go now at center ice. Looks like there's Herberg trying to chase it down, get it out of a defensive area for the flashes. Greenberg chasing it down. He's unsuccessful. Turner has it. Austin Turner going after it. He is 
he has control of the puck now. A lot of defense on him, and Her Herman's going to get that steal. It's going to be at center ice, and here comes Bogart to scoop it up for Eastern Michigan. And it looks like the Flashes are going to get it. Hill Hillbreck has it, and he kicks it to Anderson. Anderson gets it across the blue line. Collins trying to stop it, but he is unsuccessful. Hillbreck trying to get control. Herberg shoots it, and he is unsuccessful. Herman now with the puck. He is moving it down. And now he passes it, and it looks like it's going to be a steal there from Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan now stopped there from the flashes. Eastern Michigan has it at center ice. Here comes Turner. He's stopped by Hillebrecht. Hillebrecht getting the puck out. It's really a seesaw affair back and forth. But Eastern Michigan has that puck. They get a wild shot there. Spanier scooping it up, gets it to Bioni. Bioni now slowing it down just a little bit to maintain control of the puck. Flash is moving it up. Here comes Jordan Pitts. He loses control of that puck, but Ferrari moving right around, and here they come, but it looks like oh. defense there. Successful again by Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan kicks it out a little too far. It's going to be another icing. And that ended up in an icing, but uh, Soden for Eastern Michigan there was wide open, and Bioni had no idea. And if they would have been able to connect that pass, it would have been a breakaway for Eastern Michigan. So on that weak side defenseman, they really have to hang back and watch out because Eastern's been trying to hit those stretch passes and try to get quick offense into the zone. Yes, especially tight defense is one thing Coach Underwood was really stressing, so that's an important thing for them to look out for. And here comes Ferrari. He's going up against, well, he did go up against Barton Slogger. But it looks and there's like another one of those stretch passes. They're trying to hit that a lot out of those breakouts. So Kent needs to make the adjustment and either have a guy hang back or just make sure their defensemen are back and let the play come to them. Those stretch passes are extremely deadly, especially in a great competitive hockey game like this. But it looks like Eastern Michigan again with that stretch pass now to Soden. Soden has it. He kicks it out to and it, Barton Slogger to Soden now. Soden back. Looks like Bogart's going to scoop this one up, gets it back across. And here come the Flashes recovering just a bit. It's going to move in some new lines here. Flashes have it. They're passing it out, and the pass is disrupted. And here comes none other than Barnes going after it, but he now Barnes has the puck there. Barnes gets it out, and here comes Zarecki. Zarecki moving it up. Zach Zarecki, he passes that little trick pass there. He's unsuccessful. He gets it to Schwartz. Zarecki again passing and now looks like Herberg is going to have that and that is actually Jason Smith now not Schwartz and there's Zarecki he's getting stopped there the defensive men for Eastern Michigan extremely impressive here in the early going and there is Bubonic with the miss Zarecki again trying to pick it up and it looks like it's going to be at center ice all those Kent State players got to retreat now get the puck back and they do and there's Bubonic now Oh, Looks no. like they lost control. Here comes Austin Turner from Eastern Michigan. He's going for it. He shoots. He is unsuccessful. Here comes Conlin. Tim Conlin, very impressive from Eastern Michigan. He tries to get it out, but it looks like once again, Eastern Michigan's going to still control it. Austin Turner having it. Here comes Eastern Michigan, really doing a good job controlling the offensive. And Spanier has to make that stop, and there's going to be another whistle. Uh, that's a penalty coming to Kent. And I think it's going to be Herberg. So that means another defenseman down. So only four defensemen out there for this penalty kill for the Flashes. Uh, Herberg going to go off for a hooking call with 10.52 remaining in the first period. That's got to be really frustrating for Coach Underwood. The penalties are really one of the things that have been plaguing the Flashes a lot this year. They struggled with them against Robert Morris. They, they got killed by two major penalties last weekend. They weren't able to kill them off. And again, besides the penalty on that play, then there was a turnover by Herberg that really started that um, – really started that rush he fell down making a pass and it was turned over in the zone and then he took the penalty but before that the flashes were getting good pressure in the offensive zone but they were they didn't get any they didn't put anything tough towards the net they had one shot from the point that missed the net but those forwards were trying to make the trying to make the perfect play instead of just trying to make a play towards the net they really needed to send pucks towards the net and send guys there aggressively of course and here comes herman now about a minute 38 on eastern michigan's power play Herman trying to get some momentum building, but he's unsuccessful. That defense is just too much for him. Conlin moving it up the ice, weaving through the defense. He passes it out, and there's a shot there by Bogart. I apologize, that was Porcenti. It looks like the flash is now trying to gain a little bit of control. Anderson kicks it out. It is stopped there. 
about a minute 15 left in the power play. There's going to be a stoppage of play. Chavaria was right down there trying to get that puck. And yeah. Boy, does he wish he could have <laughs> beat the goalie to it. It was a, that's a good start to the penalty kill for the Flashes, though. They really, Eastern hasn't been able to get any uh, sustained pressure in the zone yet. Flashes that now have a face-off in their zone. There's already been 47 seconds knocked off. So let's see if the Flashes can continue this uh, on this penalty kill and kind of get out of here with even strength. I would agree the penalty kill has been very successful so far for the Flashes. There's about a minute five left in the power play for Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan now moving it up. That's uh, Colton Huff. He passes it to LaPlanc. LaPlanc now with the puck being stopped there by the defense, and here come the Golden Flashes trying to move it out of the defensive zone. They kick it oh. up high, and it looks like there's going to be a call there. Another possible penalty? or um, I think it deflected. I think it hit the netting out of play, and they're going to okay. bring it back in. Looks like the Flash is bringing in some fresh legs out there. On Barnes the and Bioni on defense, yep. And it looks like this faceoff here is going to be Barton Slogger for Eastern Michigan up against Zarecki. And uh, Eastern Michigan wins that face off. About 45 seconds left in the power play for Eastern Michigan. And Huff passes it to Barton Slogger. Barton Slogger has the puck. He passes it out. Now passing to LaPlanc. LaPlanc shoots. He misses. Flashes recover. And it's going to be across center ice to the defensive zone for Eastern Michigan. They move it up. That is, here they come, and they're unsuccessful. Spanier stopping the puck. About 15 seconds left in that power play. Herman trying to play some intense defense, and the puck is going to be out of play. Real impressive penalty kill in the early going from Kent State. There's about nine minutes left in the first period, and about nine seconds left in the penalty. They just have to hold on for nine more seconds and not allow a goal. And Shea Spanier has had a good start tonight in that for the flashes. He kept everything in front of him, and uh, it, that was a strong penalty kill by him as well. There's been some high-level chances. There's been some chances in close, but he's looked strong. Let's see if the flashes keep playing defense and strong defense in front of him as Herbert gets off, and he's coming right to the bench. Yes, and oh, Spanier there in front again. Spanier. Great stop there by Spanier. you got to really give it up for him. He's gotten a lot of good stops tonight, a lot of good blocks. And... Uh, you know, this Flash's defense has been pretty impressive so far. You know, I think they've really been controlling the tempo here. They just got to be able to control that same tempo on offense as Ferrari goes up against Conlin. Eastern Michigan whiffing on that slap shot. And it, Nugent's after it with Ferrari. Nugent kicks it out. That puck is in the air, and Bogart's going to scoop it up for Eastern Michigan. He gets it out. And now Posenti trying to get it, but Eastern Michigan is unsuccessful, almost going out of play there. Here comes Turner. He gets hit hard across the face. And here come the flashes. They're moving it up now. And now a huge hit, unnecessary hit in my opinion. That's from Posenti of Eastern Michigan. He really hammered hard. I wasn't sure which one it was. I think it was Danny Nugent that he hit really hard against that glass. Kent's, Kent has not been able to connect on those stretch passes into the neutral zone, really. They've had a lot of icings here, and it, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite them by having one of these face-offs in their own defensive zone. Of course, icing is really uh, frustrating to have, especially in a close hockey game when it's 0-0 zero zero like this. Eastern Michigan trying to build momentum. Here come the flashes across center ice. That is Danny Nugent. He s scoops it up. He is unsuccessful. Here come, you know, where Necky trying to get it out there. He gets it off to Posenti. Posenti now with the puck. Or I apologize, that's not Posenti, that is Namoski. Um, Mos Namoski. It's gonna be another stoppage in play there. Looks like Spaniard got it right in the glove. We got 7.45 here left in the first period and it's a nothing, nothing game. Uh, right now it's really, anybody can take advantage at any point in this game. It's kind of, been, it's been back and forth, pretty even play, so waiting for somebody to take advantage of the, the first mistake and capitalize on their opportunities. Yeah, very great hockey being played tonight. There goes Cody Greenberg up here for the flashes. He tries to shoot very close there. Greenberg recovering it. He kicks it out. And a shot there, but the flashes do not get it. Bubonic chasing it down. And that's, right behind that's what them. the flashes need to do. They got two shot, two quick shots right to the net. They're firing pucks. That even though that one missed wide, that's the, that's the right idea. Get those pucks to the net and, net and test this goalie. 
Yeah, they definitely have the right mindsets here. About 7-10 left. And here comes Jacob Friedman. He tries to get it out. Friedman now chasing it down. He scoops up the puck on his offensive. Here comes Herberg. He gets a steal there. There's a steal there from Eastern Michigan. Here comes Colton Huff, one of the more impressive players from Eastern Michigan. And he loses the puck. That was, a, that was a dangerous offensive oh. zone pass there by Friedman. He threw that lazily over to Herberg, and they're lucky that didn't come out in a break for Eastern Michigan. Of course, her, you know, got to make smarter decisions there with a the puck. Boger, or Huff trying to shoot it there. He misses. Friedman trying to get it out, and here comes Nate Schwartz. Schwartz moving up center ice past the blue line. A little bit of a steal there, but it looks like Herberg's going to chase it down for the flashes, moving it back, and uh, Colton Huff's going to test him, but looks like it's going to be at center ice now. And Oh, a big hit there against Friedman. Here come the flashes now on offense. Conlon tried to lay a hit there, but Friedman stood his ground nice, nicely in front of the bench. It got the Kent bench hyped up. Let's see if that'll get him going here. Of course, and here comes Schwartz now. He kicks it out. There's Zach Barnes. He maintains puck on the offense. Oh, that bounced nicely over to the in front of the net. Of course, this is just impressive offense. We are seeing here from the flashes. Zarecki loses control of the puck. Eastern Michigan scooping it up. Eastern Michigan now having it on the defensive. No, they get it scooped up again. Chavaria now. He has the puck. Ruben Chavaria oh, kicks it down. out. The ref is down, and here comes a shot there. Missed shot there twice by Nate Schwartz, and here come the flashes with that puck. They oh. shoot it again. It is not going to be good, and here comes an icing call possibly, and it will be icing. That was a close icing call. Conlon was racing with Bioni, but they got back. That's the kind of shift. I mean, this has been the, the top line for Kent all year. It's been Smith, Zwerke, and Chavaria. And finally, that after the last shift, I was saying that they, were, they weren't getting enough shots. They got a lot of shots there, and there was a couple nice chances there. Big kick out by Collins. Nobody there for the rebound, though. But that's what they got to do. Just keep getting those shots on there. Those rebounds are going to be there tonight. Awesome. And these rebounds are, of course, very important here tonight, as well as the amount of shots. And, of course, smart shots are also a big factor here. Looks like um, none other than Jason Smith's going to be in the faceoff here against Conlon. It's going to be pretty even here. It looks like the Flashers are going to win it. And here comes Ch Chavaria. Chavaria shoots. He misses. And there's going to be another stoppage in play. Nice step in by Chavaria there. It was, the puck was hanging there. And he rips a nice shot low. But Collins is there to make the save and stay square. You got to give a lot of credit to Chavaria there. Really bringing the energy, bringing the heat. But you also got to give a lot of credit to Daniel Collins, the goalie for Eastern Michigan. He's gotten a lot of good saves for them tonight. So you got to give credit where credit's due for Daniel Collins. Looks like another face-off here. It's going to be Jason Smith winning it. And, oh, a close call there, a close shot there. Smith fighting for it. And here they come, Chavaria fighting for it. And there's going to be another whistle. Uh, I don't know what we're getting here. I got to say, the refs have been really been blowing their whistles a lot in this first period. Looks like another hooking call, but this time coming to Eastern. So it's going to be a Kent State power play coming. It's going to be interesting to see how in. Uh, kills off their penalty, and it's going to be even more interesting to see if the Golden Flashes are going to be able to capitalize on their first power play of the evening. Looks like we're going to have Hillebrek in there have a face off, and it looks like he will be going up against. Is it going to be Barton Slogger? Yes, it will be Barton Slogger versus Hillebrek here in the face off, and Hillebrek wins the face off. Here we go. Kent State on the power play. Barnes, he kicks it out to Zarecki. Zarecki has the puck. He passes now to Hillebrek. Hillebrek back to Zarecki. Zarecki, or I'm sorry, that's Barnes. He passes to Friedman. Friedman passes to Herman. Ooh. Herman trying to shoot. Close call there. They're fighting for it at the net. About a minute 45 left in the power play for Kent State. But it looks like it's going to be another. That's what they need to do on this power play. They worked that around a little bit and got a good shot close to the net. Let's see if they uh, they like to take advantage of their shots from the point on their power play, especially Barnes there on that left side. So let's see if they, that's what they're going to try to do here to start off. And here we go, another face off there. Flash is keeping control on the offensive. Barnes has it. He's moving that puck. He passes to Zarecki. Zach Zarecki now weaving through the defense. He shoots. He's unsuccessful. Here's Hunter Hillebrecht now getting a little bit of a fight there by Adam Olson. Puck is going across, and it looks like Spanier going to stop it. About a minute 25 left in the power play. And here comes some transitions now. Looks like Bioni is going to have it. He's got to be careful there. There's, whole, there's Soden right there for Eastern Michigan, but it looks like we're going to get it across. Here come the flashes moving it up, and they're going to try to shoot. And another, is that looks like a goal, a goal there, the first goal of the game. And it's going to go to the Kent State 
Golden flashes, phenomenal goal there. They just plopped it right in. I believe that goal Halupnik. was from Chavaria. Nope, Halupnik or, got that one. Hal yep. Oh, Halupnik. Halupnik was able to, uh, that was a nice little play there, and he was able to put that one in. And Collins, it looked like he got handcuffed by it a little bit, didn't really know where it was hitting him. And it's impressive to see. That is what we need to see. Flashes capitalizing on the power play. And that's what they just needed to be doing all year. It's great to start off one zip at home against Eastern Michigan. But Eastern Michigan looks like we're trying to answer back here. Heavy hard on the offensive. David Bogart now trying to hold it in. He shoots it. And it's going to be scooped up there. Glove save. Successful glove save by Spanier. And there, there it is. That's the, the special teams battle has been important for the Flashes all year long, especially penalty, especially killing off penalties and being able to score on power plays and take advantage of those opportunities. And they've, in this first period so far, oh, Whoa. what a shot Close that was right off the there. post. Spaniard just, that went right off the left post. He got lucky on that one. But That's as okay. I was saying, as we got a stoppage, I think for a hand pass. Yeah, it looks like. Oh, uh, no, it's. Never penalty possibly? Nope, hand pass. We're going to go back down in the gotcha. zone. The And the flashes and with the special teams here early in this game, they kill off the penalty that they have to that they took early, and they score on their power play opportunities. And Coach Underwood has to be happy with taking advantage of those opportunities. Of course, and here comes Conlon. He's going to be going up against the flashes there. LaPlanc passes it out. He is unsuccessful. And here they come now. Everybody's fighting for that puck there. Jason Smith trying to get it out of there for the flashes on the defensive zone. He passes it to Chavaria. Chavaria moving it up center ice. He gets it across. He loses a little bit of control of the puck. Chavaria chasing it down, though. He recovers that puck. He is just on the money with getting that puck, but it looks like he lost it right there. Turner loses the puck, and here comes Dubonic. He passes it out to Schwartz. And now they're going to pass it out again. And here comes Spanier trying to stop it there. He is successful. It looks like Bioni's going to have it. Bioni kicks it out. Here come the flashes across the blue line, but it looks like Soden's going to get it for Western Michigan or Eastern Michigan. He moves it up, and it's going to be another glove save. Successful glove save there by Spanier. That was not a good. That was a tough turnover by Zarecki there. He's trying to get it out for a breakout pass, and weakly threw it. Soden read that perfectly and came in for a chance. Flash has got to be a little more careful on those breakout passes. You don't want to give the odd man rushes to Eastern Michigan. Of course, just because you've got the first goal doesn't mean you can't keep playing smart hockey here. And it looks like the puck is going to be going down to the Eastern Michigan defensive area. They're going to kick back puck out. Eastern Michigan trying to recover. Huff loses it. Here comes Eastern Michigan now getting it back. And it looks like they're going to be unsuccessful there. Barton Slogger trying to get it. Oh, a close call there, a close shot but it is unsuccessful. That is from Namoski. He tried to get that shot there, and it, now it's going to be across center ice. Namoski sh chasing it down, but it's going to be icing here. Well, last night, West, or Eastern Michigan was able to get out to a 4-0 lead, and Kent didn't get to put a goal in until the second period. Tonight, they're up early, 1-0, so Coach Underwood has to be happy with them getting out to a jump here in this game and trying to uh, kind of change their fortunes and getting off to a hotter start. Of course, and it looks like the puck is going to go out of play there really quick after that face-off. That was out of play by none other than Adam Olson from Western Michigan. Now, we've been calling a lot of games this season. I definitely think we are seeing a different Flashes team, a very mature Flashes team tonight. And they're playing really well hockey, and I'm just impressed from what we have been seeing. And here come the Flashes, speaking of them, and it looks like Eastern Michigan going to try to get that. But nope, here comes Cody Greenberg. He's moving it up, scooping it through. He's trying to get his first goal, and he is unsuccessful. Here come Eastern Michigan. Barton Slogger with the puck. He's moving it up. He's on the offensive. He shoots. He almost gets it, but he is unsuccessful. And here they go, trying to get it out there. Huff with it. Huff moving it around, trying to get it to Adam Olson. He's unsuccessful. Here comes Bioni. Bioni moves it up. Up to center ice, Hillebrecht. Now he's past the blue line, moving it up, weaving through traffic. He tries to get that pass, that shot there. Was attempted from Greenberg. He's unsuccessful. Eastern Michigan and Greenberg now scooping it up again, trying to keep it on the offensive. But Bogart for Eastern Michigan is going to scoop it up. About a minute 36 left in the first period of play. Bogart holding on to the puck there. The flashes want to get something going. Halopnik trying to stop him. And it looks like 
Herberg's going to get it at center ice. Friedman getting it across. And Collins now scooping it up for Eastern Michigan. But it looks like the Flash is now trying to maintain control. There he is. Herberg with that long shot. It's a miss. That dart there. And it looks like Schwartz trying to get it. He's unsuccessful. Flashes are doing a good job keeping it on their offensive zone. Here comes Friedman. He's after it. He's unsuccessful there. Schwartz trying to get that puck. He's getting hit up against the wall against Bogart. Bogart with the puck trying to get it out of there. And it's going to be at center ice there. For the Flashes are going to have it at center ice. They're going to kick it out. And here they come. Friedman with it. He shoots it. He is unsuccessful. A lot of action going on. And that puck is now going to be across ice. And it looks like we're going to call for icing here. Yep, icing. Smart decision there by Spanier to stop the clock. About 38.4 left in this first period of play. Now, are you impressed with what you're seeing from the flashes so far? Yeah, I mean they're 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 playing to their level. They're they're getting good chances. There there's still a lot of room for improvement though. There's a lot of uh, they're turning the puck over a lot in the neutral zone, especially on breakouts. And Eastern Michigan is looking continuously for that stretch pass to come out of the zone. And they've almost hit it a couple times. So those defensemen for the flashes need to stay aware of the Eastern Michigan forwards getting behind them and the Kent forwards need to be more careful with those passes on the breakout. Of course, and there's about 30 seconds left now. Kent having it on the offensive. They're trying to move it out. That's Jason Smith. He kicks it over and it looks like they lost control of the puck there. Ooh. And Bioni trying to kick it back. Zarecki and Smith going after it. There's Chavaria now. And here comes Smith. He's moving it out. The puck is against the wall there. And here comes Eastern Michigan, but no, it's going to be a stop there by Dylan Anderson. Eastern Michigan now moving it up. Conlon trying to get it. Anderson once again on the stop. Here comes Chavaria picking up the puck. There's about less than a second left, and that is going to be the end of the first period of play. The Flashes are in the lead right now, one goal to zero. You got to be impressed with what we're seeing from Kent State so far. They are having a couple hiccups, though, in the early going. As you said, those stretch passes they need to work on. Do you think Eastern Michigan is going to be trying to attack um, those passes in the second? Oh yeah, that's that's that looks like it's their game plan for the night is to they that's the way that they get the breakout on the zone. They're putting pressure on the defense, kind of spread it out and open up more room in the uh, neutral zone. Um, I was really impressed with the Flash at that period though. They they came out tonight. That last night they went down early and got down big and had to try to battle their way back tonight. They kept everything in front of them, and I mean they weren't able to get complete control of the game. I think that Eastern Michigan is still very much in this game and they're still playing pretty much with them but Kent was able to capitalize on their opportunities. The thing we haven't seen from them this year is a good penalty kill. They've been very inconsistent on their penalty kill. The one opportunity that happened last night they got scored on. Tonight opportunity for the first in the first period for Eastern Michigan and they defend the penalty kill nicely and they get and they get out of there. And then uh, talking about we talked to Coach Underwood about getting better chances and better shots towards the net and some more consistent scoring from this young team. They come out on a power play, another big opportunity in the game, and they take advantage of it. And so really that's what makes the difference in a lot of these games are taking advantage of those special teams opportunities. And Kent, because they took advantage of it, they're up one nothing early on. Of course. Now there were two players that um, Coach Underwood really wanted to uh, pay attention to from Eastern Michigan. Those players were Colton Huff and Barton Slogger. Tucker Barton Slogger, that is. And those two players played very impressive last night against Kent State. Do you think they're doing a good job shutting those guys down, really not having them build momentum when they're on the ice? Yeah, um, Huff has not really looked like a factor yet tonight. He's their leading goal scorer and leading point getter, but he, they look like they've kept him in check. But Barton Slager, he's a big body, and he's been able to control the play a little bit. And he's gotten a couple big chances. There was one chance where he got a shot off and got his own rebound and shot it over the net, and then he had a nice pick in the neutral zone and had a nice opportunity there at the end of the period. So that's somebody that they definitely have to look out for. Huff hasn't been dangerous yet, but you know, like you said, he's been dangerous all year, and he's somebody that they have to keep looking out for. Definitely, they cannot slack when it comes to uh, Colton Huff. Now, out of the two goalies, who do you think is really winning the battle there? Do you think um, Spanier is having the more impressive showing, or do you think Collins is? Even though Collins allowed the goal, he has had a lot more shots on him. Yeah. So which goalie is really standing out for you, you know, so far? Both of them, they, they look pretty even to me tonight, but they don't. both of them don't look particularly sharp. Um, Collins is kind of sliding. He's kind of overplaying a little bit, especially on that goal. It looked like he didn't really even know where the puck was, and he kind of got lost on it. And there's been a couple times where he's been sliding it or the puck has been sitting in front of him, and they've been work fighting at it and hacking at it, and they weren't able to do anything. And Spanier hasn't been tracking it as well either. There's been a couple missed opportunities, but if they didn't miss those, they, they hit the post on a shot that should have that beat him but missed the, hit the post. And on Barton Slager's chance that I was just talking about a couple minutes ago, 
Um, he just missed the net over the net, but he had a chance there too. So there are opportunities there to put up pucks on these net and get by these goalies because they haven't looked, they haven't been tested as much as they could be with the high level chances. It's um, Eastern's winning shots nine to seven in the first period for my tracking, but it hasn't really been high level chances that have been dangerous. So we'll see if this game kind of opens up a little bit more. It hasn't really opened up. We haven't seen a lot of odd man rushes for either team. It's been kind of controlled in that way. Um, they've been they, they've been trying to hit stretch passes. Both teams have, but th they've been defending it well. So we'll see if maybe in the second period legs. You know, you start to see it in the second games of the weekend. The legs start kind of getting tired a little more, a little heavier. So we'll see if some of these chances start coming up and they'll take advantage of these goalies. Or maybe the goalies are going to step up and settle into the game a little bit. Definitely. Now that was your first period of play. The Flashes are in the lead 1-0. to zero. We're going to take a short break real quick, and we'll see you guys soon for the second period of play.
All right. All right, guys, welcome back to the action here live at the Kent State Ice Arena. This is the Kent State Golden Flashes playing host to the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It is currently 1-0. to zero. Golden Flashes have the lead. And before the game started, I talked to uh, captain of the Golden Flashes, Ruben Chavaria, and the three things he really took away from the game last night against Eastern Michigan was that they need to improve their defensive zone. They also need to improve um, their smart shot selection. And then, of course, they definitely have to improve on playing in control. Mm -hmm. You know, he was talking about how they really couldn't control the first period, but second and third, they gained more and more control as the game went on. Do you believe that the Flashes are doing that tonight? Do you believe that they have more control tonight, Jake, yeah. than uh, they would have had last night? Yeah, it, they look they look like they're more under control. They look like they're more composed tonight. Um, they're playing more to their game style. They're getting pucks to the net. They need to get more pucks to the net. Travari, one of the things Ruben talked about was um, out shooting them. They're not out shooting them right now. They're getting out shot nine to seven. So they need to get more pucks to the net. And there's there's been the opportunities to get the pucks to the net. They just aren't they aren't taking advantage of those opportunities. They're up one nothing. They had a nice power play goal. They had a nice penalty kill to keep it even. But even strength, I would say the it's been pretty even. But I would say the ice is probably tilted a little bit more towards Eastern Michigan. They've had some better chances than uh, Kent has had on on the even strength. So we'll see. Kent's playing solid in their own zone. They're not letting up too many, too many high-level chances. But there were a couple times that Spaniard should have gotten beat, and that they, um, that Eastern Michigan didn't take advantage of those chances. So you wanna, you wanna make sure that you're still limiting those things while you're getting your chances. This game could turn on any point. I mean, it's it's pretty even game so far. I would say that one of these teams, if they're gonna make a mistake, that it could be costly at some point. It doesn't look like it's going to be a high-scoring affair tonight. Teams are kind of laying back. The goalies are playing solid, but I think that they're both beatable. I don't think either of these guys are stonewalls in net tonight. They don't look like they they look like they're having a little bit of trouble tracking the puck, especially low. Collins tracking the puck low has not been able to. He hasn't been able to cover up the puck in some instances. And the first goal was low, and he kind of slid and wasn't able to uh, wasn't able to pick it up with his kick with his pads there. And Spanier has just had a, looked like he had a trouble tracking the high shots. Um, one beat him. One beat him and hit the post. So we'll see if the goalies kind of make their adjustments and, you know, see what happens from that end of on course. the rest of the evening. And there's uh, Dan Collins over there taking the ice for Eastern Michigan. One player from Eastern Michigan that's been impressive all season. We were talking about before the break is Colton Huff, and Huff has not done too much so far in this game. Do you think he's going to bring more to the table in this period than he did the first period? I think a player that that's danger that's as dangerous as Huff. Um, you're always going to have to be aware of what it, where he is on the ice. They they did a nice job of neutralizing him, but other guys were also effective in, you know, getting chances as well. So they're putting an emphasis on Huff, and they're they're taking him away right now. But there's going to be plenty of opportunities, for, and you got to just make sure that you got to keep these guys in front of you. They're really Eastern Michigan has really, really been trying to hit those stretch passes out of the zone and get a quick breakaways, especially to guys like Huff and their big goal scorers, um, Huff and Conlon. They've been trying to hit those guys deep. So let's see if they keep trying to do that and if they get behind these Kent defenders. Remember that Kent only has five defensemen, and it might be the five most trusted defensemen, it might be the most five reliable, but that's going to put a wear and tear on these guys that they usually wouldn't get in a regular game. So we'll keep monitoring that. We'll keep monitoring these guys' legs. They traveled back from Ann Arbor last night, both teams. They're playing in the second game tonight. It was a hard-fought game last night. So we'll see how this game goes along and uh, as it progresses, see which team has the legs to keep it going. Of course, it's all about endurance tonight here at the Kent State Ice Arena as we are getting set here for the first face-off of the second period. And it's going to be interesting to see who can win this face-off, hopefully build momentum going into the second period. It looks like it's going to be Tim Conlon of Eastern Michigan going up against the good old Rob Ferrari from Kent State. And here we go, face-off win for Eastern Michigan. They get the puck, they're moving it, they're at center ice. They get it across the ice, and looks like the Flash is going to be one scooping that one up. Not a lot of offense built there by Eastern Michigan. Here come the Flashes. Barnes kicking it back out right on the money there. And it looks like they're just going to be holding it for just a moment. And here they come now at center ice. Ooh, and it looks like a cross trip up there. Bioni controlling it there for the Flashes. He kicks it out. Batowski kicks it. Eastern Michigan now in control. And it looks like it's going to be drawn back. Flashes are going to get it back. 
We have a defensive end for them. There's Barnes. He kicks it out to center ice. Ferrari was the intended person, did not get it. And then it looks like Bogart's going to have it there for Eastern Michigan. He kicks it out. Now another pass there to Posenti. Posenti at center ice. He's looking for a pass. He misses and looks like it's going to be, oh, not icing. Tim Conlon's there to scoop it up. And there's Colton Huff, player we were talking about earlier. Oh. And here they come again. And there's another turnover in the zone. And yeah, those turnovers are definitely costly. Olsen trying to fight for it. And now Bogart's going to scoop it up. He's going to get challenged by Zarecki. Zarecki after it against Bogart there from the puck. He loses and it. Olsen's after it. You can see every time that the puck is kind of, uh, it's not, not exactly in the defensive zone for Eastern Michigan, but if there's a play that's kind of developing in their own zone, they're hanging a forward out at the red line and just try, just even if they're not sending that pass up there, it's working to, uh, to hold that defenseman back and kind of create more space for them to get out of the zone. But one of those times they're going to try to hit it and it, it might connect and Spanier's going to have to be ready for that and the defenseman have to keep looking out for it. Of course, Spanier got to, has to always be on his toes here. Flash is winning the face off there. Zarecki trying to get it. Gain control. Ruben Shavaria now getting challenged there and it looks like it's loose. Here comes Colton Huff. He's trying to kick it out. He's unsuccessful. Barton Slogger fighting for it for Eastern Michigan. It's at center ice there. And here comes Bogart. Once again, have a defensive Chavaria scooping in. But there's Soden. Soden gets it across. Here comes Huff. Huff shoots it. He misses across the ice. And now it's back at center ice. No, it's going towards the defensive end for Eastern Michigan. And then Wernicke trying to get it. Ruben Chavaria challenges him there. And Namoski trying to kick it out. There's Barton Slogger going up against Friedman. Up at center ice, Dylan Anderson, the defensive man for Kent State, he's trying to kick it out there. He moves it across, gets it to center oh. ice, and no, it's going to be stolen there by Eastern Michigan. And now great it's play by again. Herbert. Herbert. He made up for it. He had made it, turned it over really badly. Or that was Anderson. Sorry, he made up for it, turned it over there, and then made a nice play to stop that two-on-one opportunity. Yes, of course. And Schwartz now on the offensive. He kicks it out. Going to be a steal there by East. Oh no! It looks like the Flash is going to maintain control there, and then Halupnik now. Moving the puck, he kicks it off to Friedman. Friedman has the puck scouting out. And then Holupnik now back to Friedman. Friedman getting challenged there by the defensive man. Holupnik now kicking it. Friedman has it. Looks like sticks are going And we're going to get a penalty to Eastern here. That's on... Uh, on Looks like Namoski? No, I think Wernicke is going to get that one. He took, he, took down, he took down the Kent player in the defensive zone. I think it was a hook or a trip hook another hooking call so Wernicke's gonna go to the box here for a hook with 17.06 left in the second period and the flashes have another chance on the power play coming up yes that has got to put a smile on coach Underwood's face this is the second power play of the game for the flashes and a second penalty as well for Eastern Michigan and here we go flash is gonna win the face off kicking it out now looks like the flashes have it they're on the offensive Moving it to Barnes. Barnes moves it to Ferrari. Ferrari has it. Ferrari looking for the shot. Back to Barnes. Slap shot there, and it is a miss. Great save there by Daniel Collins. That was a nice shot by Barnes. He got that nice and low. Um, they got to get more people in front of the net to try to get deflections on this goalie. You know, even though Kent State's had a lot of shots on goal, the shots, I feel, have been very smart, very well-planned shots, and it looks like they're going to win the faceoff again. Hillebrick fighting for it. Now Herman's trying to get it, but Puck is flying across the ice, and it looks like Flashes are going to recover it there. Here comes Ferrari moving it up. Looks like Barton Slogger getting the Puck. He moves it across ice, and Spanier is going to be there to stop it. About a minute 23 left in the power play for Kent State. They move it across. Trevario was the intended man. Olsen's going to stop it there, but no. Flashes have it at center ice there, and it looks like Jason Smith kicking it out. They move it across. That is Zarecki. Zarecki moving it up the ice, weaving through that defense, trying to get a good look. He is unsuccessful. He passes to Chavaria. Chavaria has it. He's fighting for it. And here comes Turner kicking it out again. About a minute left in that power play. Spanier saves the puck. And here comes Bioni to scoop it up. 50 seconds left in the power play. 15.54 left in the second period. Here come the flashes now. And Bioni trying to get out of his defensive zone. 39 seconds left in the power play. Really tough D. And then Halupnik now on offense weaving through. He's looking for a shot. He gets to Chavaria right on the money. It looks like Bioni's going to possibly shoot. No, he passes it off. 
Great shot. Verbioni with that slap shot, and he is unsuccessful. Great save there by Collins. And oh, looks like goal's not going to count there. That's that's a tough one. They lost that, but I think the ref lost sight of it, and they called that off before they were able to poke that in there for the flashes. Yeah, a little quick whistle for the uh, for the ref there, and that faceoff's going to come back in the flashes zone. But that's what I was talking about earlier with Collins. That you saw that he looked really unsure. That was a puck that was right on the ice. Halupnik, it really shouldn't have been a dangerous chance, but it kind of snuck behind him. He, he's not, he's not confident, and he's not been, um, he hasn't been sharp on those low shots. So I wonder if Flashes are going to keep sending it low and just hoping for rebounds or just hoping to beat him. That's definitely the goal there, shooting low, especially when Daniel Collins is really not completely there. When he's missing those low shots, so. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit where credit's due to that Kent State offense. There's about 19 seconds left in the power play. Jason Schwartz will be in for the flashes in that faceoff. He's going up against Eastern Michigan's player right there. The player he went up against was none other. Well, here we go. His shot on goal, missing it. And the flash is now, oh, a slap shot by Bioni. He misses Ruben Chavaria trying to scoop it up. And he kicks it out. Flash is getting tested here. A second left and the power play is now over. It's back to even strength, five on five. They're unsuccessful there on the power play. Icing call here, about 15 minutes left in the second period. The first power play was much better in the, than the second power play was. The Flashes didn't really get any sustained pressure on that power play. They had the one nice chance and the goal that got you know called off, but it wasn't a sustained effort by them. So we have 15 minutes left here in the second, and uh, Eastern Michigan was able to kill off that penalty, that hooking yeah, call on Ward. I'm definitely impressed with that penalty kill there from Eastern Michigan. Uh, but it looks like now stick is loose. Looks like Huff lost his stick there. He's still trying to fight in there. Herberg with the puck. He moves it up right on the money there. There's Ferrari at center ice. He's trying to get it across. He's unsuccessful. Anderson. And Chavaria, or I apologize, Herberg. They're trying to go for that. Herberg, they stop it there. Here come Smith Sim. And he's unsuccessful, but it looks like Eastern Michigan gonna lose it there. And there's Barton Slogger trying to recover on the Eastern Michigan defensive zone. Pitts going after it. And it looks like Slogger got rid of it. Ferrari really fighting in there for it. He really wants that puck. Collins now gonna scoop it up. And here comes None other than Eastern Michigan moving it across center ice. Flashes are going to get it. Herberg there. They were looking the for puck. that stretch pass there, and Herberg and Anderson were both back on that forward player. So the Flashes have made the adjustment to kind of take that away from Eastern. And that's one thing that was a great adjustment. We're moving now through weaving, and it looks like some good defense there by Eastern Michigan. Lupnik trying to stop him, but oh, and a shot there on goal. Herman trying to go for it. And it looks like he's going to get caught up there with the stick. And... They're going to fight for it here. Slap shot there, and it's a miss again. Good stop there by Collins. Herberg has, or Herman has it to Greenberg. Greenberg over to Barnes. Barnes slap shots it, and it is a glove save by Daniel Collins. Collins had some pretty good saves there. I'd say those are the more yeah, impressive Herman, saves we've seen all night from Collins. Herman tried to test him low. Um, and that's what we've been saying to do. He tried to put it five hole, but he covered that up nicely there. Barnes got a nice shot through there too. He's got to keep that a little lower though so it doesn't get eaten up like that. And here we go, Conlin up against Holupnik, moving it out. Here come the flashes, they kick it, and it's going to be unsuccessful, that shot there. Here come the flashes going in for that fighting puck. Nate Schwartz after it, and there's Barnes. He recovers it. He gets it across Olsen with that stop, and here they come. The Western Michigan Eagles getting it out. And it looks like it's going to be at the Flash's defensive. But Bubonic moving it across at center ice is Olsen. Olsen moving it through Schwartz. Eastern Michigan, I apologize. And um, here we go. Looks like the Flash is moving it across, and there's going to be a whistle on the play. About 12.46 left in the second period. There's a good pressure by Eastern Michigan there on that little rush. Yeah, you got to give credit where credit's due to Eastern Michigan. They are playing. It's been very on. Well. It's been it's been all flashes here in the first period. There, the second period though, the first eight minutes has really been controlled by the play. This is the first kind of sustained pressure we've seen from the Eagles here, and they have their top line out there of Huff, Soden, and Barton Slogger. So let's see if they try to take advantage here. And here goes Holupnik. He's going up against Hunter Soden. It looks like there's some. Ooh. 
Some early sticking there between Schwartz and it looks like Schwartz and I believe that's Tim Conlin. Or no, that's Barton Slogger. My apologies. Here we go now. Olsen has it. He tries to kick it off to Huff. It's a misfire. Here comes Friedman. He's after it. Gets it to center ice. It's going to be unsuccessful. Bogart scooping it up. He passes across. Here come the, the uh, Eagles. The Eagles move it. And it's going to be a glove save there by Spanier. Nice stop by S Spanier. Snags that with his glove. Huff coming in there. He's a dangerous shooter. He likes to on it. Looks like he likes to come down that right wing and kind of just unleash a quick wrister. He's trying to go up top on one of these goalies, but Spanier's been good up top. Definitely, and the one thing Ruben Chavaria was talking about was control, and I definitely think the Flashes have controlled the tempo, the pace of this game thus far in the first and second periods. And here we go, the Flashes going in for that faceoff. Looks like Western Michigan's, or Eastern Michigan is gonna win that. Missed fire there. Eastern Michigan now with the puck, and Kent State gets it across. Zarecki chasing it down. He's unsuccessful. There's Namoski. Namoski weaving through the off or the defense of Kent State. Kent State now. Ruben Chavaria with it. The flash is moving it up the ice, and it's going to be a stop there by Huff. Huff Barton Slogger to Huff. Huff now has it, and Bioni is going to stop Huff nice there. Nice hit by Bioni there. There's less than 12 minutes left in the second period. And here come the flashes. There goes Jason Smith. He kicks it out to Ruben Chavaria. Chavaria moves it up. A close call there, but it's going to be a save there by Danny Col or Daniel Collins. And, you know, that's a nice rush by the flashes. That's a nice shot by Chavaria. You want to get the puck to the net, but that puck's got to be low. I mean, he, he shoots it up high into his chest, and there's no chance for a rebound. He's got Smith and Zarecki going hard to the net. If he shoots that off the far pad and keeps it on the ice, that's getting kicked out, and that's a rebound opportunity. Those are just the types of smarter shots that Coach Underwood's talking about and, yes. and, and Shavari we're talking about. you gotta, you got to learn the placement of that shot and give your guys the best opportunity to go after it instead of just trying to beat them up high and beat them with a fancy goal. Yeah, I mean, there was another long shot there by Eastern Michigan. And of course, Spanier scooped it up there with the glove save. And here we go, another faceoff. It's going to be Ferrari against none other than uh, Simp. But it looks like Flashes are going to get that win there. And here we go, Danny Nugent, center ice. He gets it across. He's weaving through. He shoots and he misses. Here comes Simp. Cameron Simp trying to get it across, but the flashes stop. Ferrari with that stop. Here come the flashes now going for that shot, but it is unsuccessful. Once again, Collins with the save. Eastern Michigan's just throwing the puck away right now. I mean, they, they're they they're not connecting on these passes. It looks like without that stretch pass, they don't really know how to try to break out of the zone, and they're just kind of throwing it up the wall, and Kent's been able to pin them down low and get a lot of pressure for it. So let's see if Eastern tries to make an adjustment here because they've been having a lot of trouble getting out of their own zone in the second period. Definitely, and then Conlin there winning the faceoff. He gets it to Austin Turner. Turner now moving it up to Posenti. Posenti moving it up with Spanier with the stop. Spanier kicks it out. It looks like it's going to be Nugent. No, it's not Nugent. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be Posenti. Posenti gets the puck. He steals it, trying to get it across for a nice shot, but it is unsuccessful. Here comes Ferrari. Ferrari moving it up. He's looking for Nugent, possibly looking for a shot. He shoots it. He is unsuccessful right against the wall, and oh, it's going to be close there but no cigar. It looks like, once again, another glove save by Daniel Collins here tonight. And there is 10.38 left in the second period. I got to say, do you think that Eastern Michigan's emotions are starting to get the best of them here? Yeah, I think that they're just, they need to just settle down and just get back to their game. They played a lot better in the first period. They were getting more chances, and they were it, the play was pretty even. Even though I would think that they were controlling it a little bit more at 5-on-5, five five, but this has been all Kent State in the second period here. Definitely, and it looks like there's five guys going for that puck. Eastern Michigan kicking it out now, and Eastern Michigan again with that puck. Olsen, he kicks it out, and Wernicke kicked it out. Now here comes, oh, it looks like Flash is going to get it. Bubonic picks it up. Center ice here going to come, and that's Hillebrick. Hillebrick moving it up. He's looking for a shot. He is unsuccessful. He looks for a shot again. He is unsuccessful, and it looks like Bioni is going to get it. He passes it out, and it looks like some really, oh, wow, some high... High octane defense, Baron Bioni again with the shot. Oh, he is man. unsuccessful. That was a close shot, and that's a chance Eastern that Michigan are going to recover there. That's that's a nice look. I like the I like the idea of looking to Hillebrecht. Oh, here's a quick chance for Eastern. 
taken down. I like the there. I like the look there from Bioni. I like the pass over. Hillebrecht was there. There was a good chance, but you got to fire that on net. I mean, you're you got a chance at the slot. You just got to put that on net. Of course, and here comes Hillebrecht now for Kent State on offense, and the Flash is now trying to build an impossible shot there. No, they are unsuccessful. Down to Anderson. Anderson gets a. You know, with right there, it looked like Anderson chasing that puck down. They're calling for icing, and they will be successful. There will be an icing call. Nine, it looks like the clock is not stopping. It looks like now it just did. So 9.18 is left in the second period. How important is it for the Flashes to capitalize on this faceoff here? You know, they want to they want to try to keep up the pressure that they were just getting. That was a nice chance there by Bioni and Hillebrecht. Hillebrecht had a nice shot before that, too. He followed his own rebound, but it was a nice stop by Collins. But a lot of good pressure on that line by, for, for that line by Kent State. They've been controlling the play the whole first 10 minutes of the second period. Let's see if they can keep it up and get rewarded here with a goal. Yeah, you got to love it here in the second period. It flashes oh, almost getting the that shot there. Schwartz now going after it. Friedman coming around. And it looks like it's going to be no ice. Oh, no icing. Looks like Spaniard's going to scoop Herbert, it up. Herbert tried to play that, so they'll call that no icing on that for the linesman. Oh, and nice here pass. Comes here comes Friedman. Friedman now out in the open. Friedman trying to get it, and he is unsuccessful. Holupnik trying to stop the puck from Eastern Michigan getting out of there, and Holupnik now getting it across. Friedman chasing it down. He's fighting Bogart for it. Bogart has the puck for Eastern Michigan. He kicks it out. And here comes Friedman. Jacob Friedman looking for a shot. He shoots it, and he is unsuccessful. Oh, that's going to be a penalty to the flashes. Be a penalty there for now, you want to go hard to the net, but I, he ran, I think that was Schwartz, who ran right into the goaltender. They're going to call goalie interference every time on that. So a costly offensive zone penalty for the Flashes with 8.25 here remaining in the second period. And the Eastern Michigan Eagles will have another chance on the power play. Of course, you know, you don't want to run into the goalie like that. That's the second penalty tonight for Kent State. And this will be the second power play opportunity for Eastern Michigan. Let's see if the Eagles can capitalize and tie this game up here with 8.25 left to go in the second period. Two minutes are on the power play and it's gonna be a face off between Ruben Chavaria and none other than Austin Turner. Here we go, it looks like the Flashes are gonna give a win there on the face off. Here comes Jason Smith. He's trying to get it out of the Flashes defensive zone. They do, they kick it out really far across the ice to Eastern Michigan's defensive zone. And it looks like Smith's hungry for that puck. He's going for it. Possible shot here. The goalie lost his stick, and the puck is going to be out of play. That was a great effort by Smith. He's able to take that from the Eastern defender from behind the net and get a quick shot and even knock the stick out of Collins' hands there, but he wasn't able to capitalize there. Extremely impressive there from Smith. Now he did put a little bit too much heat on that puck, forcing it to go out of play, which is just unfortunate. But in the heat of a moment, anything can happen in hockey. Very unpredictable sport. And here we go, Holupnik, he's going up against Conlon. It's gonna be another face off here. There's about a minute 38 left on the power play. Eastern Michigan moving up, Conlon has the puck. He's moving it up across. Conlon trying to get a good look, but he is being faced off there from that Kent State defense is now at center ice. Here comes Ian Herman. He's moving in really hot. He shoots it. He gets a possible shot there. No one is going to be unsuccessful. Holupnik was looking for that one. And here we go. The, flat, or the Eagles now controlling it. That is Austin um, Turner. Turner has it up across ice. And here we go. Uh, La LaPlanc has it. And there's Namoski with that shot. He is unsuccessful. About a minute left in the power play. Here comes, looks like Zarecki trying to, or no, that is Barnes. He's trying to stop it there. Flash is now moving it up, trying to build momentum. They're moving it across ice. That is Bioni who has it. And it looks like he's not going to build anything off of that offensive stretch. Really hard hits here in the early going. Flashes still have the puck there in control. Huff is trying to challenge. He's trying to get that puck. He is unsuccessful, but it looks like e Eastern Michigan will be successful. There's going to be an I believe that was offsides. offsides yep. Yes. Nice offsides there. So there are 26 seconds remaining here in the penalty for the Flashes. 6.51 remaining in the second period. They had a nice chance there. Herman, that was a great shot by Herman. That's exactly the kind of shot you want in the rush. Shot it for that far pad, gave an opportunity for a rebound, but it was a beautiful save by Collins, desperation effort. 
of course. And here we go now. Eastern Michigan with the puck. Bogart trying to get it past center ice. He is unsuccessful. It looks like the Flash is trying to move it across. About 15 seconds left in that power play. Olsen scoops it up. And he's going up against Zarecki. Zarecki trying to fight for it. He's unsuccessful. Ferrari fighting for it against Olsen. He is successful. Anderson kicks it out. Herberg kicks it out. And now here comes Bogart with the puck. And it looks like the power play is over. The Flash is successfully killed off the penalty for the second time in this game. And it looks like, oh, Barton Slogger going for it. He is unsuccessful there. Zarecki kicking it out to center ice. Nugent meeting Zarecki. Zarecki has the puck. He's going on the offensive, and he scores! Oh. Great shot there by Zach Zarecki, extending the lead two goals to zero here in the second period. And just phenomenal look there. What did you say, Jake? That was a nice, there was a nice opportunity there for the Flashes. They were put some pressure on the boards there. We're able to get a break. Zarecki coming in with, didn't come in with some speed. He set up the defenseman. Defenseman didn't step up on him. And he just took a shot, used the defenseman as a screen. I don't think Collins had a chance to see that. It went right over his blocker side. It was a nice shot. And with 6.06 .06 remaining here, the Flashes take a 2-0 lead after killing off a penalty. Yeah, that's got to be a huge momentum gainer there. But the Flash is now trying to get it out of their defensive momentarily. Eastern Michigan, it looks like the puck is going to be out of play. That is just huge for the Flashes. You know, they were, they just killed the penalty. And now they just extended their lead to 2-0. to zero. And they've looked like the better team the whole second period, and they got rewarded for it there. Nice penalty kill and then getting a goal. So now they have a 2-0 lead here, even though it says 5-0 here on the, uh, in the Kent State Ice Arena. Of course, but we all do know the score is 2-0, just to clarify. Looks like Hillebreck trying to get out of a defensive zone. He kicks it across to Herman. Herman is unsuccessful getting it past neutral ice. And Opsal trying to get it up there for Eastern Michigan, but Bubonic moving it across. Puck is now going to center ice, and Nav Nav uh, it looks like it's going to be possible icing. No, it will not be. Offsides. Possible offsides. I apologize there. Hillebrecht going for it. Hillebrecht has it on the offensive zone for the flashes. He gets it stolen by Namoski. Namoski really pressuring him there. Herman trying to come up with it. And it looks like a possible shot opportunity for none other than Greenberg, but he is unsuccessful. Slap shot there by Barnes. Another unsuccessful shot. Here comes Herman. He has the puck. He's going for something big here. He wants that goal. He is unsuccessful. He's passing it out. The puck is going to be out of play. Cody Greenberg there hits it out of play. About 4.52 left in the game, or in the second period. I apologize. We still have another period of hockey to play, of course. Just a very exciting atmosphere here at the Kent State Ice Arena. And if you're a fan of watching on YouTube or online, you could join us for a game. The next game will be next Friday, November 15th at 7.30 here at the Kent State Ice Arena. Be sure to get your tickets either online or at the gate. And it looks like, looks like it's going to scuffle there for the puck now. Eastern Michigan trying to get on their offensive, but the flashes are going to say no, moving it across. And it looks like there will not be an icing. And here come the Flashes really fighting up against Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan struggling here in the early goings. Halup Nick trying to get it, but he is unsuccessful. It looks like the Flashes have it now. That was Schwartz. He tripped up there. Here come, here comes Conlon, Tim Conlon for none other than the Eastern Michigan Eagles. But at the point, at this point, is Jared Friedman. Now it looks like Schwartz trying to get it across, but once again unsuccessful. About four minutes left in the second period of play. Here comes Jason Smith going for it. And Bioni's going to scoop up the puck. He's got to be aware of Soden. And Ruben Chavaria was the intended man. He lost control there. Zarecki going after it. Chavaria scoops it up. Chavaria to Zarecki. Zarecki possible shot opportunity. Oh, he misses nice. there. Nice save there by Collins. And now behind the goal are the flashes. They're trying to get it, get some momentum building. It looks like Olsen's gonna get it out there for Western or Eastern Michigan. And here they come. The flashes now have control. Out to Bioni. Bioni, high shot, missing. Ruben Chavaria now with the puck. About 3.15 left in the period. Olsen has it. Olsen trying to get it out, and it's gonna be out of play there. Just Misfired a little too high there from Olsen. 
That was a good rush there by the flashes. They got a um, Travaria was able to get a nice break down the down the wing, and he threw it in front of Zarecki. Zarecki with a nice shot low, kicked out right by Collins. Nobody was there to get the rebound, but that's the kind of plays that they need, getting pucks right into the slot, and Zarecki has looked dangerous here in the second period. Of course, Zarecki has been pretty impressive all night. Ferrari now with it. He is unfortunately going to miss there. It's going to be down at the Flash's defensive zone, about three minutes left, and there will be an icing call. Just a terrific outing from both teams, but really the flashes have been the ones in control. It seems like Eastern Michigan has really been, uh, it seems like they've been shocked tonight at the uh, effort put on display from the flashes. Rob Ferrari is going to be in the faceoff. He's going up against Barton Slogger, who's been quiet tonight. And it looks like Eastern Michigan or Eastern Michigan's gonna get that win. And here comes Huff trying to get it across. Here comes Soden chasing it down, but he is gonna get beat by Ferrari. Ferrari now with the puck. He's looking for a pass or a possible breakaway. Going through, he passes there to none other than Fatowski. And it's gonna be once again flashes on offense here. Fatowski chasing it down. He is unsuccessful. Looks like Eastern Michigan trying to get control, but the Flashes keep fighting back. They're on the offensive. Batowski still chasing that down against these Eastern Michigan Eagles. And now looks like Eastern Michigan's still struggling to get it out of their defensive zone. And it looks like they might be successful this time. It looks like Colton Huff moving it across center ice. He shoots it, and he is unsuccessful there. And Cody Greenberg kicking it. Out and it looks like right now the flash that has it is Herberg. Herberg kicked it out though, and here comes Herberg now again chasing it. And another icing will be called about a minute 55 left here in the second period of play. Do you think Eastern Michigan is extremely frustrated with these icing calls? Well, it's a it's a it's a method because they, they're getting these icing calls because they're looking for that stretch pass over and over again. But Kent has taken it away here, especially in the second period. They're, they're going to keep trying. That, that That's obviously their offense and their breakout, and that's how they're going to they're trying to generate chances. But Kent has been, especially the defenders, have been hanging back and been able to take it away so far in the second period. Of course, and it looks like Kent once again on the offensive. Herman going after that puck. Herman has the puck. He gets it out to Barnes. Barnes trying to get that shot, but he is unsuccessful. That defense there by Namoski is impressive there from Eastern Michigan. And that puck, they're going to be fighting for it against the wall. Namoski really aggressive. He's just hammering against Barnes. Herman's going after it now. So is Le, Le, LePlanc. He's going after it. Four guys fighting for that puck. Just aggressive and it looks like LePlanc is going to be the one getting it. They pass across to none other than Todebush. Todebush shoots it. He is unsuccessful. And it looks like it's going to be another scuffle there. About a minute oh, left. Oh, what a save by Spanier there. That was a great chance right in the slot by the player Opsel, and that was a nice save. And Opsel was having some words there in the front of the bench or in front of the goalie with Bioni. But nonetheless, that was a great chance. But I think we're getting a penalty to Barnes there after the chance. And at 58 seconds left here in the second period, the Eastern Michigan Eagles are going to get another opportunity on the power play. Of course, and this is the third penalty tonight for Kent State. This is the third power play opportunity for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Will they capitalize on this power play? Well, we'll just have to find out. And here comes Soden, he's going up against Trevaria. Looks like they're gonna win the face off here. Eastern Michigan kicking it. Now Huff has it, he's back to Bogart. Bogart teasing at the slap shot, back to Huff. Back to Bogart, Bogart shoots it, and it looks like a scuffle there for that puck. Will they save it? Oh, and it's oh, very nice, close call there. Nice play by Anderson, that puck was sitting right in the slot and he was able to clear that out. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit there to Anderson. Here comes Olsen. Olsen trying to get it across. He is unsuccessful. Huff, he has the puck. About 30 seconds left here in the second period. And there's going to be a misfire. Good block by Chavaria. You got to give credit to this Kent State defense playing really tight, really aggressive. Bogart looking for a good look, but he is unsuccessful. Very passes to Soden. Oh, a Soden. Spaniard blocked that pass out in front from Soden with his blocker. That was a nice play. All right, 10 seconds left here. And about a minute 10 oh. on the power play. What a stop. The, the, Chavario had two blocks on that pen, on the little penalty kill rush, and Spanier made two incredible saves. That one was Huff right on the doorstep, and Spanier was able to jump over and make the stop. 
big play there with ten, under 10 seconds remaining here in the second period. This defense has been nothing but impressive, especially here with this third penalty kill. This is just unbelievable right now. There's about 6.4 seconds left, and I'm sure Eastern Michigan's hoping to get at least one point on the board here before the end of the second period. This faceoff is going to take place right now, right here. Polupnik is going up against Soden. And it looks like looks like it's uh, going to be a win there, a close shot there. And that will do it for the second period of play. At the end of the second, it is two to zero. Kent State has the lead here. There's about a minute and two left on that penalty that they're gonna have to kill coming out in the third. What does that do for Kent State, knowing that they have to kill the penalty for the first minute and two seconds of the third period? Does that affect how they go into the third period at all? Well, that, they just gotta keep doing what they've been doing on the penalty kill. They've, they've looked a lot better than they have, looked more comfortable than they have during the year on the penalty kill, but there at the end, that was the most, that was the biggest, um, the biggest and best opportunities that Eastern Michigan's had all that entire second period and kind of the entire game was on that penalty kill. So it was a little iffy there for the flashes, but Spanier came up with some big saves there and they um, Anderson made a great defensive play and Chavaria had some blocks. And so they were able to get out of it there. The minute two left on the kill, so they got to kill that off to start the period. But um, you ask any team that's on a power play, they, they don't like starting a, starting the period on a power play. You kind of have the momentum and the flow of it in the regular of a period. You don't really like to start it in the middle of a power play. So we'll see what the Flashes do. But that was an impressive period by the Flashes. Um, they came out. It was pretty even the first period, I would say. Pretty even play. And I would say that most of that period that Kent was able to control the play and kind of end, take advantage more of their opportunities. Of course, I'm very impressed with how the Flashes have been playing, not just in the second period, but all night. They've really uh, improved a lot this season, and it's great to see this team grow. Which player on Kent State has really stood out to you tonight so far in the first two periods of play? Well, I don't know if it's a player as much as just a line, but the, the first line of Chavaria, Smith, and Zarecki have been solid all around. Zarecki got the goal there in the second period. Um, that was a nice goal that he had. Chavaria had a couple nice blocks there at the end of the period, but that line has been, they've been good defensively and they've been getting a lot of pressure and controlling the play in the Eastern Michigan zone. And those are your captains, those are the two most reliable players on your team. But it's been a good team effort from everybody. The Greenberg, Herman, and um, Polupnik line as well have been really, have been really, really good. They've been getting a lot of chances. Um, Collins looked better that period. He looked a little more comfortable. He got beat on that goal by Zarecki, but he was screened. I don't think he saw that one. And Spanier come up, make a couple huge saves there at the end. So, um, I mean, the goalie stepped up in the period for sure, too. Now, Jake, it has been obvious that Eastern Michigan seems to really rely on that stretch pass, and it seems like the Flashes are really doing a good job neutralizing that. Do you think they should go into the third period with a new game plan, not so much the stretch pass, maybe work on a different kind of offense in this third yeah, period? Yeah, it, it looked like they made an adjustment there late in the period. They weren't, they weren't trying to stretch the guy. They were trying to just send the guy up through the middle and just kind of hit him quickly. And it was working a little bit. They they have they have offensive firepower. Barton Slager, Conlin, and Huff. Huff was getting a lot of chances there early, and Spanier was able to, you know, stand st stand tall and take advantage or er, and stop those opportunities. But you can't keep letting these guys get these dangerous opportunities. They know how to put the puck in the back of the net. But it's been strong defense from Kent. They really haven't let up too many high level opportunities, and so we'll see how they continue on um, and keep defending that stretch pass. But if one of those breaks, we'll see if Spanier can be up to the task. He's made a couple big saves one on one early. Now, are you impressed with what you have been seeing uh, from Kent in the neutral ice? They've really been working on that all season, and they used to be struggling with that a little bit. But would you say they've improved uh, based on what we've seen tonight in the neutral ice? Yeah, they've they've taken care of the puck a little better, in this, especially in the second period. The first period, both teams are kind of throwing the puck back and forth to each other. But in the second period, Kent was able to take care of it more, and they were able to get better chances because they were taking care of the puck. Their attack was more um, nuanced. It was more organized. They were coming down, getting. they were sending shots like, we were talking about in the first intermission, get those low shots and get cha rebound chances. And that's what they did a lot this period. They were sending those shots across and getting those rebound chances. Collins is able to stop most of them, but those are the key types of plays that you want to keep making and build those good habits for your team. What do you think 
is uh, the most important thing that Coach Underwood's really preaching to uh, the Flashes right now in that locker room? I think it was their shot selection. I mean, that was that was the difference in the period. They were able to get – they outshot Eastern in that period, and that was one of the things that was important for them at the beginning of the game. But they were taking better shots, and they were getting better opportunities. Collins stood on his head a little bit. He was able to play a little better. But those are the kinds of chances you want to keep building on for the rest of this game. Of course. Now, that is going to do it for the second period. It is still it is 2-0 to zero right now. Kent State is in the lead. Once again, the next game will be next Friday, November 15th at 7.30, live at the Kent State Ice Arena. So if you love watching it on YouTube, feel free to come out and watch it live. Um, the game will start, like I said, at 7.30. But that is next week. This is still this week. We are done with the second period of play. We're going to take a short break real quick and we will return to call the third period of action. Stay with us.
gentlemen to this presentation of Kent State playing host to the Eastern Michigan Eagles live at the Kent State Ice Arena here in you guessed it Kent Ohio but before we get started with the third period we're gonna talk real quick you know flashes have controlled this game so far in the first two periods of play they are still killing that penalty to start off so Eastern Michigan will be on the power play for the first minute of the game does that benefit Eastern Michigan going into this third period? Oh yeah, I mean they have the advantage. The Penn State, the Penn State, Kent State penalty kill has been pretty good to start the game. Um, they've been weak all year, but they've been good tonight. So they want to come out strong, and it's really going to set the tone for the third period. Um, if Eastern Michigan, the next goal is the biggest goal in this game. Three nothing. That's a tough thing to come back in the third period. But if they get a goal here in the next minute, get it to two one. It's a whole new period, and there's a lot of time to go off with it. But for the story for Kent here is finishing a game. I mean, they've got a two two nothing lead. They had they've had leads the last couple weekends against Robert Morris. They fought back last night and tried to come back. Can they hold a lead? It's a it's a, it takes a lot of discipline for a young team to hold a lead against another team in a third period. They're up two goals. So let's see what they do. You don't want you don't want to be conservative, but you don't want to take it too many chances and let something happen uh, in your defensive end. But I'm assuming I'm gonna guess that the flashes are gonna keep up the pressure, keep up the aggression, and not be not settle for just having two goals in this period. I definitely agree. The Flashes need to finish in this period. They've really been struggling with that all season, is finishing the whole game, controlling the whole game. They seem to do well controlling at least two periods of the game, but tonight might be the night that they control the whole game, and hopefully, Jake, they can beat that six-game losing streak, a streak no team wants to have. Hopefully, that can be beaten, and in the past, tonight, live, I have a Kent State Ice Arena, and it looks like about a minute 30 till the remainder. Oh, I apologize, actually, period's about to start right now. We're uh, meeting at center ice. It's going to be Tim. Here we go. The puck is about to be on the ice. And there it goes. Puck is on the ice. Eastern Michigan getting that win. Here comes Adam Olson. Adam Olson moves across center ice. He's fighting hard on offense. This is a very important moment for Eastern Michigan. As we said, they really need to capitalize here. Looks like Olson holding the puck now. He shoots it and he misses. He was very close there, but he was nice clear there by the flashes, able to get that out of the zone. And now there's only 36 seconds left in the. Eastern Michigan power play. Yeah, and David Bogart now takes it to Olsen. Olsen moving it up center ice. But the flashes are going to stop him there. Herman chasing it down. He's got the puck. He looks for it. He scores! Oh. Tremendous shot there and tremendous score by Ian Herman. That may have been the most important goal 
of this game. Yeah, we were. I mean, we were just talking about it. The next goal was going to be the biggest goal. What a play by Herman. He puts pressure on the defenders, able to pick that off coming into the zone. And like we've been talking about for Collins, he's weak down low. Herman knows that. He just puts a backhand on the ice where Collins can't reach it. 3 nothing lead, they get it on the penalty kill, and the Flashes are now in control of this game here in the third period. That has just got to be deflating for the Eagles here, giving up that goal on the power play that they had, and Huff trying to shoot it there. He is unsuccessful. Hillebrecht trying to get it out there. It looks like Huff's going to get the puck back for Eastern Michigan. Now to La LaPlanc. LaPlanc with it for Eastern Michigan. He moves it across. Flashes are going to stop him there. And it looks like the goal is going to be moved there. Whistle has been blown. We'll see what the call is going to be here. You know, Spainer is down there. The goal moved. Yeah, I think the net just came off, so they're just uh, putting it back up. We're going to have a face-off here in the Kent State end. Two right. seconds left on this power play, so the Flashes are about to kill off this opportunity again. Great, I mean, a great turnaround for their penalty kill. They've looked really good tonight. They haven't, haven't let up a ton of chances, and they've killed it off, and they even got a shorthanded goal. Yeah, and if they keep this up, Eastern Michigan not, might not be able to get a point here. Could just be a shutout win for the Flashes. And here we go now. Flash is trying to get out of their defensive. And it looks like they're moving it across center ice. Herman moving it across. And Namoski trying to stop it, but he is unsuccessful. Holopnik trying to score. He is unsuccessful. Nugent kicks it out to Herberg. Herberg with that shot. And Eastern Michigan trying their best to get it out. And it looks like they are unsuccessful here. The puck is going to be out of play. And it looks like there's going to be a new line coming in there for the Eagles. 18-24 left in the third period of play. It is still 3-0. So the Eagles, Golden the, flashes. the Eagles need to get something going here. They haven't been able to get any sustained pressure really since the first period. If they want any chance to get back into this game, they got to start getting some breaks and get it in, taking some chances and getting some more shots on Spanier. But Spanier has looked great. He really settled in the second period and made some outstanding saves, and he's carried that into the third period as well. I would definitely agree, and it looks like, oh, there's going to be a save there by Collins. There's been a lot of pressure on uh, Daniel Collins tonight. And it looks like the flashes are not going to let up on that pressure whatsoever here in the third period. And here we go, face off here. It's going to be Ferrari. He's looks like the flashes are going to. It looks like a real uh, fight there for that puck. Flashes are not going to have control. Oh, it looks like they do have control, and it looks like a shot there is unsuccessful. Here comes oh, almost out of play. Bubonic trying to stop it. Looks like the puck. I think it did. I think it hit somebody in the bench there. So it's going to come out to the zone. That was a nice shot by Butowski. He's got to get a little more on that chance, but that's a nice opportunity there for the Flashes. I definitely think out of these two teams, the Flashes have controlled the puck far better than Eastern Michigan has in this game. And Eastern Michigan now, here we go. Looks like Bogart with that big slap shot. He misses. He's unsuccessful there. And it looks like another whistle will be blown. And I'm not sure what the call is here. They're going to have a face off here in the zone. Possibly the puck went out of play again. It's going to be Conlin going up in that face off for Eastern Michigan. And Barnes fighting for it for Kent State. Puck is now in the neutral ice area. Dylan Anderson. And it looks like Barnes has it for Kent State. He gets it to center ice. Center ice is Herman. Herman's going after it. Herman is unsuccessful. The uh, Eagles have it now at center ice. Here comes Barnes. Barnes gets it at center ice for the flashes. He moves it across. And it's going to be Collins scooping it up there. And here they come. It looks like Friedman going after it. Friedman, Ooh. close shot there, but that no cigar. That was a lazy, lazy pass thrown to the middle by the... Uh, by the defender Bogart there, and her, uh, Friedman was almost able to take advantage. Yeah, Friedman almost capitalized on that lazy pass. Here comes Hillebrecht. Hillebrecht looking for a chance there, but no, he's unsuccessful. 16.45 left here in the third period of play. They're at center ice now, and they're all fighting for it. Oh, no, he hit the ref there. The whistle flying across the ice. Here comes that puck now at center ice. is Schwartz, and the puck is going to go out of play. I believe Soden was the one who hit it out of play. 
Uh, that is, of course, 71 Soden from Eastern Michigan. We're going to have another faceoff here in the third period, 16.32 to go in what has been a phenomenal hockey game. And here we go. It's going to be Eastern Michigan is going to get the win there where Necky passes out to the Eastern Michigan player. It looks like that puck is going to be there. And here comes Bioni. Bioni now after it. And here comes Herberg. Jacob Herberg now controlling it to Bioni. Bioni out to Schwartz. Schwartz has it. He shoots it. And he is unsuccessful off the padding there of Collins. And it looks like Eastern Michigan going to move things up here. There's Huff. He gets it across. Huff passes it now. And it, it's now oh, a nice play ice. by Herberg there. Herberg, great defense there. And it looks like the puck is going to be in the offensive zone. Friedman trying to break away here. Friedman trying to control the puck. It looks like he has it. He bounces it off. Olsen now getting it. And it looks like the Flashers are trying to keep it on their offensive. Olsen trying to kick it out to Huff. He is unsuccessful. Zarecki has it. Zarecki unsuccessful. There's Bubonic keeping it on the offensive zone for the Flashes. Shavaria, he kicks it out. A shot there, and it's going to be a save. Missed there, and there comes Jason Smith fighting for it there. He is fighting it. And there's Zarecki Smith. They're all going after that puck down there on their offensive. About 15 minutes left here in the third period. Nice shove off there. And Zarecki has it. He shoots it, and he is unsuccessful. The puck will go out of play. 15 seconds, or 15 minutes, I apologize, left here in the third period of play. That was a good that was a good opportunity there. That was again that Smith, Travaria, and Zarecki line getting a lot of pressure for the flashes. Um, they keep it they're keeping up the pressure again. There's been some Eastern Michigan rushes that been but the flashes have been able to handle them and they've been able to control the play still. Yeah the flashes are doing a good job of not letting up and continuing to put in the pressure. And it looks like the flashes are gonna win the face. No it looks like Eastern Michigan's gonna get that win. Puck is, everyone's battling for that puck there, right against the glass. Oh, wow, the hit there and the puck now flying around. Here comes LaPlanc, and he loses it. There goes Danny Nugent. He has the puck down by the goal. He is trying to get a good look, and it looks like Pitts is going to be the one going after that for Kent State. He gets hit hard by Eastern Michigan. Ooh. LaPlanc now with the puck trying to recover it, trying to get it out of their defensive zone. But there's three flashes on top of him. And it looks like Namoski taking it up. He's across center ice. He shoots it. He Ooh. is unsuccessful. That was a nice little rush by Namoski coming from the defensive end there. He's just got to get that on net. Namoski trying to shake things up just a little bit here. Here comes Barnes. Barnes for the flashes has been impressive tonight. He gets it to center ice. And, oh, a big heavy oh, hit yep, there, that's gonna and be it's going to be a call. Pacenti's going to go for interference there. He tried to lay a body on, uh, I believe it was Nugent in center ice, but the puck was not there at all. And so Pacenti's going to go to the box for interference here. I don't know what he was. I think he thought the puck might have been rolling in his feet and tried to time that up, but just an unnecessary hit to take, especially when you're down 3-0. And now the Flashes will get an opportunity with 13.58 here. Remaining in the third period, they are going to go to the power play. Yes, this is the third time tonight where the Flashes have been on that power play. They capitalized earlier on the power play, so let's see if they can do it again now. With 13.58 left in the third, two minutes are on the power play. Here we go, the Flashes win the faceoff. Friedman, he kicks it off, slap shot there, and it is a miss. Here comes Austin Turner trying to kick it out. It hits the ref. Turner again at center ice. He kicks it out to Conlon. Conlon moving it across the offensive zone. He kicks it to Olsen. Olsen and them looks like they're trying to hold that puck, and it goes across center ice. It's going to be a st scooped up there by Spanier. Spanier trying to get it. He gets it across to Bioni. Bioni moving it across out of a defensive into center ice, past center ice into their offensive zone. Here comes Bioni now. He's getting pressured on defense. Jason Smith scooping it up. Bion or again, back to Holupnik. Holupnik, he kicks it out. And it looks like Bioni's going to have it again. Chavaria has it. He shoots it. He is unsuccessful. Once again, here we go, across center ice. And it looks like Spanier, with ease, is going to scoop us up. There's about a minute left in that power play. 
And Barnes is going to be the one controlling the puck here. He kicks it out. Now to Herman. Oh. Herman loses the puck. Olsen has the puck. He's on offense. He shoots it. He is unsuccessful. Great glove save there by the one and only Spainer. That was a tough turnover there uh, by the Flashes. They lost the puck right at the blue line, and Olsen was able to get a nice chance coming into the zone for the uh, for the Eagles. So we'll see. Spanier's been still looking good. He looks sharp. He's been up to the task for everything. I definitely agree. I feel like Spanier has really improved throughout the evening. It looks like going to be a looks like the Herman's going to have a puck there after that. The Flashes won the face off, and it looks like Herman's trying to get it up. Gets it across, weaving through that defense, and he's really getting pressured inside there. And here comes Barnes. He has it to Zarecki. Zarecki to Barnes. Back to Ferrari. Ferrari has it. Ferrari looking for a shot, and Ferrari shoots it. Oh, oh and great God. shot there by Zarecki. He just snuck in that there, was... and he just tapped it in. Now it is 4 0. The golden flashes. That was such a nice play by Ferrari. He made a slick little move around the Eastern Michigan defender to get to his backhand. Throws a nice shot, and like we've been saying all night, get those shots low off the pads. He's in, and Collins is going to kick out those rebounds. So that he put Ferrari put that shot right in the perfect spot. Zarecki was sitting there back door, and that was the easiest goal Zarecki's going to have. His second of the night, and the flashes on the short-handed opportunity. Get another one, another shorthanded goal here in the period. That's a great turnaround from the, how the penalty kill has been playing. Of course, this has just been a phenomenal game here from the Flashes, 4-0. Eastern Michigan's got to be furious with this. And it looks like Eastern Michigan will win the faceoff. There's about 12-15 left. There's still 17 seconds left in the penalty. And the Flashes are going to get the puck again. They get it across center ice. But it looks like Olsen's going to pick it up here for Eastern Michigan. Then another stop there at center ice from Anderson. Ferrari's going to scoop it up. He kicks it to Herberg. Herberg against the wall now, kicking it to Batowski. Batowski loses it. Batowski gets it again. He loses it once again to Wernicke into center ice now. And it looks like the penalty has been killed off. 4 nothing here in the game, 11 minutes left. And it looks like Herberg's trying to get it out, dancing around with it. There's Anderson. He kicks it out. And here they come. That is Turner. He was on a shot. Oh. Great save there by Spainer. Turner took that shot. It went right wide. It bounced straight off the boards behind Spainer, but he was able to track that down. Yeah, great save. Great stop there by Spainer. And back to that earlier goal by Zarecki. I mean, just a beautiful look, beautiful shot. There was really nothing Collins could do back there to stop it. It was just such a great look. Collins has been giving tap. up those. He's been giving up those rebound opportunities. So in. He just, he kicked that right out to Zarecki. Zarecki was in the perfect spot to put that home. Of course, here we go now. <laughs> Excuse me. And it looks like down to Bogart. Bogart shooting. He is unsuccessful. And now Posenti has the puck. He is trying to get a good look here, trying to get a good pass. Bogart been right on the money there to Namoski. Bogart again now. The Eastern Michigan Eagles are going to have to retreat to avoid the offsides, but... Kent State's going to capitalize on that, moving the puck to their offensive. About 10.58 left here in the game. Here comes Conlon. He's moving it across that defense. Conlon really pushing it up the ice, but he's going to get stopped there by Bubonic, and it is going to go out of play for another faceoff. You know, I've called a lot of games this season here at the Ice Arena, and i got to say, this is one of the most impressive outings if not the most impressive outing I have seen from this Kent State team. Would you agree with that, Jake? Yeah, I mean, the, the first period it was even, and they, they looked like they were trying to find their footing, but ever since the second period started, the Clashes have been in control of this game. They're playing their kind of style. They're getting pucks to the net. They're playing good defense. Coach Underwood has to be happy with the progress that he's seen from his team this year and, and the way they've been battling, and especially tonight, it's kind of all coming together for him. Of course, great effort here from the Flashes and... You know, here we go now. They're trying to get it out of their defensive, but they're unsuccessful there. Soden kicks it in. There's a great goal there by Barton Slogger. The first goal of the evening for Eastern Michigan. And, you know, that's really what they wanted. They didn't want to get shut out tonight. So they get that one goal. There's still 10 minutes left in the period. Do you think it's possible for Eastern Michigan to mount a comeback to possibly tie it up? That's a start. I mean, that's a, the, getting one goal back is a start. That was a breakdown there for the Flashes. Um, they lost Barton Slager in the slot, and the defender really he committed too much to, uh, 
I believe that was Soden on the side who put who sent that pass to Barton Slager, and Spanier really didn't have a chance. Um, loses his shutout opportunity here in the third period, but still with 10.30 remaining, it's a 4-1 lead for the Flashes. Of course, and there's Herman now getting that steal at center ice, and the Flash is trying to get it, kicking it across Hillebrecht, fighting for it, but it's going to be unsuccessful there because Olsen from Western Michigan, or Eastern Michigan, he picks it up. And here we go, Hillebrecht getting it across to Herman. Herman loses it. Olsen has it for Eastern Michigan. Ten, sec ten minutes left in the third period, and it looks like Herberg is trying to recover it. He's unsuccessful. Here comes Colton Huff. Huff has it. He's getting heavily guarded there by Hillebrecht. And Herberg gets the puck. He's moving it across, trying to get out of a defensive zone. Dylan Anderson now for the Flashes has it. He kicks it across. Hillebrecht has it. He kicks it across. And it looks like it's going to be stopped there. And here come the Flashes trying to get it out of their defensive. But... What Eastern Michigan's really fighting back here. The puck is now loose. It's now on the uh, Eastern Michigan. Power play Michigan. coming up here for the Flashes. That was a little, uh, I think they're going to call it tripping. Yep, tripping on waiting to see who the player for the Eastern Michigan Eagles is. But he tripped the he tripped the Flash player in the neutral zone. He kind of stuck his knee out and tripped him up. It's going to be Namofsky. So tripping with 9.23 remaining in the third period, and the Flashes get another power play opportunity up 4-1 here. Yeah, and Coach Joseph Allen for Eastern Michigan has to be beyond furious right now with uh, the results of this game here, especially in the third period. Two minutes on that power play for Kent State. Let's see if they can extend the lead to 5. 5-1 five here is what they're looking for. Friedman has the puck. Friedman kicks it out to Chavaria. Chavaria kicking it back. Smith has it. Oh, Smith moving it to Holupnik. Holupnik to Friedman. Friedman back to Holupnik. Holupnik has it. He kicks it to Smith. Smith moving it very methodically. Back to Holupnik. Holupnik to Friedman. Friedman, it looks like we're going to hold it here. And it looks like Chavaria trying to get it. It looks like the Flashes are going to have to retreat here. And it looks like... Bioni will be there to scoop it up. Bioni having the puck. He's moving it up to Chavaria. Chavaria moving it through the rush. About a minute and 10 seconds left here in that power play. And the puck once again being across neutral ice to the defensive area. And it looks like Bioni is going to have it for the flashes. It looks like he's just going to be stalling here. About a minute left in the power play. Herman is in now. Herman's going after that puck. Zarecki is in as well. And Barnes comes in. Here comes, looks like Zarecki moving it up center ice. He kicks it to Ferrari. Ferrari has it on the offensive. Ferrari to Barnes. Barnes really high up top to Zarecki. Zarecki has it on the offensive. He kicks it back to Barnes. Barnes to Ferrari. Ferrari has it. Ferrari moving up, looking for a possible shot opportunity. And he shoots it, and he is unsuccessful. It's going to go out of play. There are, there's 26 seconds left in the penalty, and 7.48 left in the game. Eastern's been able to keep uh, everything in front of them on this power play a little bit. There hasn't been really been any threatening chances by the flashes. That was a nice shot by Ferrari. He's got to get that on net, though. So we'll see what happens here. 26 seconds left remaining in the power play. Um, Eastern needs to get this last 20 seconds killed off and start getting their and start getting some offense going if they want any chance to come back in this game. Now, Jake, I got to ask you real quick: with 7:48 left to go in the game, are the Flashes going to try to run up the score, or do you think they're just going to try to hold the puck as much as possible? I think they're just going to play their game, and whatever happens, happens. They've been playing smart all night defensively and offensively. I don't think they need to change much up. They're not going to take un any unnecessary chances anymore, but they're still going to be aggressive. All right, and here comes Ferrari with 10 seconds left in a power play. He shoots it, and a possible shot there but he misses Herman has it Herman to looks like Barnes there back to Herman Herman kicks it out Barnes with a slap shot Barnes is unsuccessful the penalty has been killed off Ferrari getting hit hard there and Barnes chasing the puck down and it's going to be icing Ferrari took a big hit there on the boards there he looks a little slow on his way back to the bench looks like he's taking that one a little bit worse for the wear but that was a nice penalty kill there by Eastern Michigan. That's the kind of momentum they need to build if they want a chance to get back into this game. 7-11 remaining here in the third period. It's a 4-1 lead for the Golden Flashes. Just a phenomenal outing from the Flashes tonight. 
And it's going to be Barton Slogger. He's going up, and he loses the faceoff. It looks like the Flash is actually going to pick up a puck here. Herberg has it. Herberg oh, loses out. it. Barton Slogger, he's going off. He's taking it across to the offensive end. He's going to get stopped there. He loses control of the puck. And Barton Looks Slogger like didn't have anybody coming with him there. He probably should have made a move to the middle of the ice. He went. He got himself caught in the corner, and there were four flash defenders back there. So good, good back check by the flashes to get back on that opportunity. It could have been bad. Of course, great job there by the flashes. Batowski trying to get it on offense. Olsen kicking it out. And look at this. All alone is up as Upsol. Upsol missing that opportunity. And Bioni going to kick it out. 6.30 left to go in the third. Here comes Batowski, Batowski kicking it. And it looks like Wernicke's going after it. No, it's going to be stopped there by Greenberg. Olsen has it. Olsen's fighting Greenberg. Greenberg trying to get that puck. He is unsuccessful. He kicks it, and it looks like Bioni once again is going to be scooping it up here. About 6.04 left. And it looks like another icing. Or looks like a penalty here. And it looks like Greenberg Greenberg's Greenberg's going, going to the box. box. Yes. And it looks like now Eastern Michigan will have a shot at the power play with 6.04 left to go in the game. They got that two minute power play. Let's see if they can capitalize here. Conlin is going to go up against, looks like, Chavaria. And it looks like Eastern Michigan wins. They got that shot there. They were unsuccessful. And Olsen's fighting for that puck for Eastern Michigan. And Greenberg got sent to the box for high sticking there. And Olsen now moving it across center ice. He's going up against Chavaria. He kicks it. Oh, that snuck off the post there. The Spaniard was lucky on that one. Yeah, that was a really close call there for the flashes. And it looks like now... Anderson doing a good job keeping it out of the defensive zone for the flashes. Her Turnover. Herman, Herman fighting for it now. Herman has it in the offensive. He kicks it to Holupnik. Oh. Holupnik scores. Great what score there shot. by Holupnik. It is now five to one. The Golden Flashes with this commanding lead here in what has been a phenomenal showing from the flashes. It is five to one here live at the ice arena. I mean, I can't, you can't, you can't ask for more. Here in the third period, they have three shorthanded goals. The weakness has been the penalty kill the whole game and uh, the whole season, and they come out in the third period and score three goals shorthanded. This is a, this is a big moment for these flashes. This is showing a lot of toughness and a lot of discipline uh, to be able to close out a game, especially in this manner. They're definitely making a massive statement tonight. But will they answer back? Possibly. Eastern Michigan trying to answer back. Barton Slogger loses control. That was just a nice shot. I mean, let's talk about the goal for as we hear. Hold on, let's see got Herman coming in on a break. Herman shoots it. a quick shot. And it is going to be but a Herman, glove save. But Herman made that play happen. He, he causes the turnover, and he was patient. He whirled around. He didn't try to send it to the net. He whirled back around up the boards. Halupnik was coming it right in in the slot, and he was wide open. And what a shot by Halupnik just to put that right over the glove, bar down. That's all you can really ask for on that. And so 4.44 with 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to the Flashes. It's a 5-1 lead for the Golden Flashes over yeah, Eastern Michigan. Yeah, a lot of fours on the board right now, and that might have been the nail in the coffin, that goal there by Holupnik. It's now 4.50 remaining. It's going to be Barton Hauser, or Barton Slogger. He is going to be going up against, looks like out there, Zarecki. There's 40 seconds left in the penalty. It looks like there's a paw. Oh, here we go. Here's a face off. And it looks like Eastern Michigan's going to get this win. They're going to kick it across. Here comes Barton Slogger. He loses control. And it looks like Bogart is going to be around to scoop it up. 28 seconds left in the penalty. And here comes Schwartz going after it, but it looks like Huff is going to control it for Eastern Michigan. Slap shot there by Bogart. He is unsuccessful. And Zarecki trying to get the puck out of the defensive. Zarecki again going after it. Schwartz and a shot there by Bogart. 
Spaniard deflected that nicely away. He just pushed that right into the corner. He didn't even let it come out to the front. Spaniard, or Spaniard playing phenomenal tonight. Big kill there by the flashes. That's a, that's a, th there's, this game's probably out of reach with four minutes left and a four goal lead, but they, like you asked, you asked earlier in the period, you said, what do you think the flashes are going to do? Are they going to sit back or are they going to be aggressive? Well, on three penalty kills, they've been aggressive and scored goals. So I think Coach Underwood got him in the locker room and said, we're not letting up on this. Let's go out there and finish it and get a win and get off the schneid here. And it looks like with 3.55 remaining in the third period, they got a 5-1 lead. It looks like the Flash are going to get back in the win column. And of course, how important was that first goal when it became 3-0? to zero? Yeah, I mean, that was... That was, that was a game changer. I mean, that was. I mean, it was the most important goal to get up by a three-goal lead instead of a two-one game, and to do it on a penalty kill to start the period. It just really sent a message for the and set a tone for the rest of this period. Of course, this has just been one heck of a game, as we've been saying all night for the flashes. And looks like looks like Eastern Michigan's going to get that win there, but the flashes are going to quickly kick that puck out of the. Oh no, but Eastern Michigan recovering, but no. Here we go. And Eastern Michigan trying to get some momentum building here in the remaining minutes. Vioni trying to scoop it up. Here comes Jason Smith with the puck. Jason Smith moving across to center ice. And it looks like it is going to be, once again, another unsuccessful outing for Eastern Michigan there on that offensive play. And here comes Smith, kicks it to Chavaria. Chavaria has it. Ruben Chavaria kicks it back to Smith. Smith shoots it, but he is unsuccessful. 3.03 left to go. And Collins once again with that glove save, stopping. Nice little play by Herberg there. He, he gave a little give and go. Chavaria fed him back. You got to give the defenseman the opportunity. He's a nice shot, but uh, Collins able to hold that one in there. Of course, this has just been, you know, Collins has gotten a few glove saves here. But obviously not as many as he's wanted. And oh, a hard hit there against the ice. Ferrari tries to shoot, but it goes out of play. That was a big hit there on the boards by uh, by Pacenti. Yeah, Pacenti has been very aggressive here in the third period. Now, do you believe that these goals are the fault of Collins? Or do you believe they're the fault of the defense? No, it's been, I mean, you, you can't be letting up shorthanded opportunities if you're a hockey team on a power play. So I, the goalie is never expecting to have to deal with those kind of high-level chances. He's been kind of hung out to dry here in this period. Of course he has, and here come the flashes again, still dominating the later part of this game. Herberg trying to build momentum, but it looks like those Eagles are going to get it. Oh, and Bubonic now for the flashes, he has it. Bubonic kicking it across, and it looks like the flashes are going to be moving it up here. And another shot there. That was by Jordan Pitts. And here comes Ferrari. Ferrari has it. He kicks it out, and then Herberg's going to miss it. Everybody has to retreat back now to avoid the offsides. Herberg's better watch out. Herberg gets it to Ferrari. Ferrari now moving it up. Two minutes left here in this game. Ferrari now back to Danny Nugent. Nugent has it. He's getting stuffed there. There's Pacenti. He kicks it, and then Bioni once again back to scoop it up on defense. And here comes Ferrari trying to get it out. Bioni fighting for it as well. Bioni trying to get it out of the defensive. Friedman now fighting for it. And looks like sticks are flying everywhere. Friedman has it in the offensive. A minute 36 left here in the period. And there's Bioni. Bioni scoops it across center ice. And here comes Ferrari. Ferrari now to Holupnik, and it's going to be another glove save by the one and only Daniel Collins. Coach Underwood has got to be happy with his performance from the team tonight. I mean, six, six losses in a row is always tough. Over a couple weekends, you don't see a win. This team could have gotten down after last night. They thought that they they thought going into the weekend that they were going to be able to you know play. They were going to be able to outplay this team. They go into last night. It's a 5-3 game, not the result they wanted. But this shows a lot of resolve. They've they've th this team has showed a lot of resolve throughout this year. They've taken a lot of lumps and they've come back from each one of them and played stronger and stronger each time. And this I has been a, this has been an impressive effort tonight. Their first really all-around game. They kind of put every little piece together. It was great goaltending. They had great defense, and they took advantage of their special teams. 
Um, you really can't ask for more from the Flashes. They got their consistent scoring on the boards, and it's kind of it's a building block game for sure. And then they're going to come into play next week against Calvin, two big games here at home, and hopefully build on this momentum that they got here tonight against Eastern Michigan. Of course, and there's about 44 seconds left in this game. Just an outstanding performance, as we've been saying all night, from the Flashes. And it looks like Vioni's going to have the puck. It looks like they're just going to wind down the clock. Looks like there's going to be some icing there. 30.1 left in this game. And, you know, Eastern Michigan has got to be just frustrated. They've got to be infuriated. They came into this game thinking, you know, we beat this team 5-3. to three. We controlled most of the game. We controlled the tempo. But they were definitely caught off guard tonight against the Flashes, and they've just definitely got to be frustrated and annoyed. None of their top guys have been really getting – getting it done here and looks like they're retreating back now 20 seconds left here in the game and the flashes once again have it and once again the seesaw affair about 11 seconds to go so it's going to be pucks going back and forth on each side of you guys Bioni now scooping it up less than five seconds Bioni is just going to hold on to it and that will be the game and the flashes finally beat that six game losing streak that they've been trying to beat for quite some time. They win tonight and they win big against Eastern Michigan. You've got to be impressed with the Flashes winning here at home five to one. And I definitely think Jake, the Flashes did everything that they sent out and that they said they were going to do tonight. One thing they really wanted to focus on was controlling the momentum, the pace of the game and also just controlling um, the scoring, the defense, making smart shot selection. Don't you think they've definitely, they definitely brought everything they wanted to bring to the table and they've got to be pleased? They, uh, they really controlled all aspects of the game tonight. Um, that This was the most complete game we've seen from the Flashes all year. They came out a little slow. They were up one nothing after the first, but it was a little slow. Um, they, they, it, they were playing it looked like they were playing down to Eastern Michigan's level. Throughout this game, they looked like the better team. They looked more disciplined. They looked stronger in their own end, and they were able to capitalize on the opportunities. And they got better goaltending effort than Eastern Michigan got tonight. But uh, it took a little while for them to get going, and especially being only up 2-0 going into the second. But three shorthanded goals in the third period, that's, that shows a lot of heart from this team. It shows a lot of determination to get things done. Um, it's, it's, it was an impressive game. It was a really impressive outing, a 5-1 win, and it's a building block game. And Coach, Coach Underwood's been looking for a statement. They were so close last weekend in two games with Robert Morris, losing in a shootout and losing in overtime to a really, really good hockey club. And you could tell that they could taste it. And so yesterday's, yesterday's result was a little disappointing, obviously because they really thought they'd be able to take it to this team, but they able to get it back, get the split, come back to home ice and get a nice win. And they've got some games coming up next weekend where they can look to build on it again. Yeah, so this team's got to be proud of what they have accomplished tonight. Hopefully they can switch things around, you know, go from that losing streak to possibly a winning streak and not just get the win next weekend, two games in a row against Calvin. Uh, what, what do they need to bring going into those games? The same kind of focus and intensity that they had tonight, you know, they, they came out and they looked focused and they looked strong and they didn't make a lot of mistakes. That's really what you, you really have to, you really have to limit your mistakes if you're a team, especially a young team. You want to be disciplined, you want to see that progress and kind of be able to just play a clean hockey game. And they really played a clean hockey game tonight. Um, they didn't make, they didn't make that many mistakes. They didn't, uh, they didn't hurt themselves, they didn't turn the puck over a lot, and they took advantage of Eastern's mistakes. And that's what we really talked about, was which team was gonna make a mistake and which team was gonna capitalize on the opportunities, and Kent capitalize on the opportunities tonight. You know, the thing that really impresses me, if a young team like Kent is playing this well tonight, you know, when they get older, when they get more experienced, this team can yeah. be really they're good. They're, they're only gonna go up from here, and this is a really good building block game for them, for sure. Of course, and that has been our, presen our presentation tonight. This has been Kent State versus Eastern Michigan live at the Kent State Ice Arena. The final score, Kent State Golden Flashes 5, Eastern Michigan Eagles 1. This has been a presentation from the Kent State student media um, hockey crew. And we would like to thank our technical crew tonight, Danny Russo, followed by Ty Kohler, and of course our great producer, Brendan Selander, and alongside Jake um, Micah. My name is Danny Callahan saying so long from the Kent State Ice Arena.